Welcome along to the party, everyone. It's another Saturday. It's another Racing Post Live. Dave Orton, thrilled to be back with you. It's Cheltenham Trials Day. We pop up to the Town Moor and Doncaster as well. Huge day up there with a Skybet chase, of course, at 3.20. Three from Donny, four from Cheltenham, where the action is well underway. Now, it's Trials Day. Will we be seeing big players emerging, of course, for the festival itself? Have we already seen one? This is an interactive show, if you don't know. Get involved. You can do so on YouTube. Do like and subscribe. Get that chat box fizzing up on Facebook Live and anything on Twitter. Hashtag RPL Live. Let's have it then. Who's with me this afternoon? Seven races all the way. Matty Batch joins me back. Dave, how are we? Oh, I'm really glad to be here with you, Batch. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. Of Dave. course it is. Absolutely. <laughs> you've had another host, haven't you, when you've been doing this show, yes, unfortunately, it, for yeah. you. It's I'm not the same. It definitely isn't the same. We love him to bits, Ross Briley, but there's only one Dave Orton, let's face it. Absolutely. It's been a great start to the year, isn't it? I mean, joking aside, we're drying up a little bit with the weather, Batch, where we go down the rest of the panel. But last week, we're going to talk a bit about Shishkin and Energamine, Trials Day. It's all bubbling up now, isn't it? Yes, yeah, and you are going to might see some different results today because the ground is, as you say, it's drying up. A lot of these have been running on good to soft and, and even heavy in some places. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. You're going to give it some welly today, Batch, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, Batty Batch has ridden on this card a couple of times. See if you can remember the horses and the dates. They are available on the Racing Post website. Right, who else is with me? You're going to be seeing a bit of him now until the Shetland Festival. You'll be delighted to know the big bear. Assistant betting editor of the Racing Post, Graham Robby, back in the chair. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Good to be back. Cheltenham. No Not goggles this week. No goggles. No, I give them a rest after last week. Now, Probably uh, should have kept them. They were lucky. Well, they were. And you wanted me to get out of the straight of the show. You are actually, you now the uh, lightning strikes and all that sort of thing, but you are on a five-timer. I am, yeah. And I made sure that when I came in to you, Dave, I said, make sure you big me up today. So it's taken you, how many seconds have we been on here? No. <laughs> not long. T too long for your liking, probably. Yeah, good work. I just want to worry about you not having those glasses on. I think you didn't look bad in them, actually. He's got these look more studious. Well, I don't know. We'll let the audience decide. Let us know. You're pressing the buttons for Barry, of course, yeah, today. I am. Who is back, the big hitter himself. He's been all over the planet, but he finds himself back where he should be. Yeah, looking forward to getting into it again, lads. I've had a nice break, fully refreshed and ready to get straight back into the action. I love it, Barry. So we've got a lucky 15. You're going to be playing for charity all along the way, of course, showcasing the functionality of the exchange and the sports book. That's key, Dave. Yeah, we're going to show you how the exchange works, what the difference is between exchange and sports book and all the great things. And the functionality, like you say, the exchange, you can be a backer or a layer, you can take a price, you can set a price. And then on the sports book, multiples and all the different um, extra places and stuff like that that's available on the, on the sports book as well. So yeah, a great big hodgepodge of betting advice throughout the afternoon. Lovely. All right, we've got a bit of time to the 155, haven't we, so we can chew the fat. Barry, how do you sit with this trials day? It wasn't on last year, of course. Fast ground. I mean, is it gonna is is this gonna be pinch assault stuff come the festival? We have seen one spinner already, haven't we, in the in the uh, four year old race? Oh, looked an absolute monster, and he shot up to the top of the market now, Pied Piper. He's shot up to the top of the market in the triumph hurl. We we did his he, he's in the same ownership as Phil Dore, who went into today as three to one favorite for the Triumph Hurl. But off the back of the day, we cut him into four from six um, by Piper. And we, they got knocked over, apparently, for the four when they after the race. And it's into three to one favorite now for the Triumph Hurl by Piper. So it's interesting, Dave, because Phil Dore's entered in the Supreme. They're both entered in the Supreme. Mm. Obviously, either could go for the Boodles as well, depending on ratings they get in that. But uh, to watch them brief for now, because we've filled door next week in the Dublin Racing Festival. Oh, we're really fizzing. And Barry, of course, we're doing Friday and uh, the Saturday and Sunday of that. What's the weather like in Ireland? We've been really dry, Dave. I don't remember it as dry a winter over here ever, really, if I'm being perfectly honest. They've put a lot of water on Leopardstown. You've had some of the top trainers saying, they might give the Dublin Racing Festival a swerve unless there's plenty of rain in the next seven days. And it's not forecast either. So they could do with doing a bit of a rain dance up there, get the pony out. But uh, at the moment, it's uh, they're doing a lot of watering. Lorcan Weir, the clerk of the course up there, seems to be uh, putting on many, many mills every day. <laughs> well, it depends what you think about water ground batch, but isn't it, it's so tricky, isn't it, for punters? Last year, obviously, unprecedented times with COVID, no spectators. We had to, you know, races all over the place, catching up and all that sort of stuff. And just when you think you found the key to finding festival winners, because they all came from the Dublin Racing Festival, the ground changes and it's up in the air again. 
That's it, so like we were saying earlier, it, it's, you can see some new results today, like Pied Piper was, I'm not sure really if he's beat anything, but visually, mm. it was very impressive. Our Connor-like, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, very, yeah. How impressed were you with Pied Piper? You kept saying, what's this, what's this? As yeah, no, I thought, I thought it was brilliant, yeah, I thought it was very, very impressive. Terrible race though, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was a bad race, it was a bad race, and his main danger was ECO, and I don't think that that ran uh, any sort of race. I've already ECO. seen in the chat box, someone has said that Paul, Hort, uh, Paul Nichols' horse is running like drains. Solo didn't turn up in the last, did it at all? So uh, we'll mm. keep an eye on that. I think that. it's important to remember about Nichols' horses that they all had their flu jab at the beginning of January, and historically January is a quiet month for him. I'd say it's another week to 10 days before you see his operation really clicking into gear day. Yeah, and again, when does that stop, I suppose? Because he's having winners, isn't he? It's not like he's not, but Ollie Murphy's done it as well, Dan Skelton's done it as well, so it's a really tricky time. It'll be interesting as well, because he's got a strong favourite up at Donny in the Mares as well. So. Yes, he has. Miranda, of course, Miranda, in the 210, yeah. our second race here on uh, Race Boys Live. Shall we get... Uh, a, a quote from Pied Parp before we go. We have got James Stevens at the course, our roving reporter. We're going to get a call around about 2.55, just after the Cotswold chase. So James, it, honestly, he's one of the best in the business out there. He's there today. We're getting all the quotes here on Racing Post Live. Stick with us this afternoon. Your alternative viewing, let's put it that way. It's going to be raucous scenes, best anti-post uh, you know, analysis in the business, and we'll be telling you where your money went as well. That's what it's all about. Great panel for you, the A-team, very much so. So Pied Piper, Gordon Elliott says... Uh, we thought we'd come over. This is uh, what he said to James straight after the race. Have a feel and see where we are. It's got to be with Phil, Fedor in mind, isn't it? We thought he was a nice horse if he settled, and if he behaved, he'd go close. Now, that's interesting in itself, isn't it? Because he, he used to race for Her Majesty, for John Gosling. It took a long time for him to get off the mark. But you know another horse that used to race for John Gosling, of course, on the flat before he went early was Isterbrack, wasn't it? So, you know, they, yeah. they get these horses that just switch on when they see the flights. So five to two, new fav. Bit short. I don't know, I think if you look down what's going to run, as you say, Phil Dorr, whether he, oh, now you'd think he might separate the two, the way that's won. But there's there's plenty of others in the triumph, it's still open, like I like the Milton Harris horse, nice, nice salute, he's done nothing wrong, there's there's plenty in there to Your pick sort the of horse, that, yeah, yeah, yeah just, uh, just, yeah, sort of gift horse, isn't it? Yeah. You, you often overlook them a little bit. Um, but the Irish, once again... Dominating the markets. Yeah, they are. Yeah, he's underrated, isn't he? Uh, Night salute, I think. Uh, Milton Harris is runner, but of course, usually the Irish do win these juvenile events, and Gordon Elliott in particular very strong. Funny, early in the week we were saying um, <laughs> about the horse today, Balco Coast, who yes. runs for um, Nicky Henderson, who's obviously got an embarrassment of riches. Constitution Neil, John Bon, and. And the other one walking on air. We were saying, oh, if this Balco Coastal were trained by Mullins in Ireland, you know, this would be getting handicapped and be going for one of the handicaps like Gallop and Deschamps did last year. <laughs> you know, and then you sort of look at that horse there and you think to yourself, oh, Pied Piper, if he's got filled already, why didn't he think about maybe trying to get that handicap for the for the um, juvenile handicap hurdle? Because now, if he the runs boodles. it, yeah. Yeah, that would that'll be running off almost top weight, you'd have thought, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, especially as really the handicapper... I don't know. It's going to be interesting this year, isn't it? See how the handicapper reacts. I reckon the handicapper is going to be giving a few more pounds to those Irish horses and giving those Brits a bit more chance. He should be. Yeah, very much so. We had the betting editor Keith Melrose on with us last week, and it was you know some of the pearls that Keith give you is that some of these horses you're watching them now that are being given chances. We're saying throughout the show, this has been dropped a couple of pounds. These old horses it looks like they've lost their own. What you know why? We'll see that in the Sky Bet chase a little bit later on as well. Well, Keith um, is of course on the panel, isn't he? Um, he is. He loves talking weights and measures, doesn't mm, he? I mean, yeah. He's on the BHA panel, which, of course, famously dropped the horse of J.P. McManus's a few years ago that then went and won the Coral Damn Cup. Damn company, is that Damn right? Damn company, company. Well, yeah. I don't know where I pulled that from. So let's <laughs> I, don't, remind... I don't think he was actually on that panel. Last week, let's, we've got a bit of time. We've got 15 minutes to the first. Last week, oh, now that the dust has settled a little bit, I want to get away with Barry on this as well. Shishkin and Ergamine, the undercard was super. We had John Bon on it as well, and the likes. It felt like a massive feel-good fact today, Batch. And I think we need more of them, Dave. You know, I think we shouldn't... People sort of try and keep the horses apart. But last Saturday proved it was just... It was amazing. Now everyone's looking forward to Cheltenham for the rematch. And it's going to be brilliant. Yeah, there were, th there were three in the yellow corner. Of course, Ryan McHugh was representing Barry. We all went for Shishkin, didn't we? And uh, it's fair to say, let's have a look at the reaction. I thought he was beat. 
And Ergamine not off the bridle. Here we go to two out. They'll be loving this at close Sutton. What have we got? Shishkin coming now. Can he break it? Unbelievable. Two of the best horses we've seen in the last couple of years. What have we got here? Two out. And Ergamine's got this, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got it. It looks like an Ergamine's got this. He's gone really low. Wow, what a performance. Absolutely amazing. Shishkin's not totally done with. Coming to the last. He's a long way home at Ascot. At the moment, all the jump. Is saying this is, this is got it. All the jump. All the jump. All the jump. Come on, go, Shishkin. This is the win for oh, one team. So close. It looks like an enemy is going to be so Wow, 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 we. Team Blue oh, Lewis Shishkin. Oh, oh, Amazing yes. scenes. Oh. For the first time here what this afternoon at the Raw. I don't know what to say. That was an unbelievable finish. We did have some fun, Barry. I can tell you that. And Graham napped it. Keith Knapp and Ergamine, very little between them, is there? Absolutely nothing. Just maybe one mistake of offence is all that's between them. And the rematch in Cheltenham is going to be fascinating. You can't see where an Ergamine is going to make that up because they both seem to give their absolute true running in Ascot. I think that's what's so great about the race. There was no excuses for either horse. They laid it all on the line. And Ergamine just unfortunately came back a length uh, behind Shiskin, but two fantastic horses. What National Hunt Racing is all about. Everyone said it throughout the week, and we're just we need more of that in the game, don't we? That's what we need to see week in, week out. Fair play to connections of both horses for running them as well. And hopefully, we get to see the rematch at the festival where I don't know, will he make more use of an Ergwin? Will they go faster in the middle part of the race and try to take uh, take Shiskin out of his comfort zone? But uh, he really devours that hill, doesn't he? I think he's done that. Ascot, to be fair, Barry, he, he down the hill, like. They were going absolutely lickety split, and like, lucky they they jump as well as they do. So, they was absolutely awesome watching them. And he definitely took Shishkin out of his comfort zone. Mm. Will he do it at Cheltenham? I don't think so, because I think sharper test batch there, isn't it? Of course, yeah. uh, yardage more than anything else. But I think what helps Shishkin is, is the hill. It'd be interesting if they both turn up and go to Aintree. I think you'll see. I think you definitely see a different result. The narrative is what we want, isn't it? Are yeah. we in danger, G? I'm not sorry. I've come to you with this one. <laughs> Who knows? We're about to probably blow up Twitter, I would imagine. But are we in danger of just thinking that racing might have just thrown us a bone? We've thrown ourselves a bone. Do you know what I mean? We're getting a little bit complacent now because very difficult to get these matchups happening, isn't it? Yeah, no, it was great, wasn't it? This is what got me into racing at the start. Like, like Viking flagships and Deep Sensation, Travado. So they why doesn't it happen up. more now? Where are the others coming from? Desert it, well, Chief. But uh, it, it tends to be Moscow the two-mile division, doesn't it? So We'd get it at least twice a year, wouldn't we? We'd get Moscow Flyer, Desert it twice a year. I'd, I'm not asking for it every single week. It'd be great if it happened every single week. But I think it's fair to, to expect them to turn up in the Tingle Creek against each other and to turn up in the Champion Chase against each other. For me, those are the two best two-mile chases of the whole season. Well, it's now become the Clarence House. And Yeah, but the Clarence House, that was a one-off. I mean, generally, the Clarence House is a walkover for one horse. Yeah. For me, the two best ch champion chase, two-mile chases of the year are the Tingle Creek and the champion chase. And that's why Nicky Henderson got so much stick for not running Shishkin, because that is like the, the, the King George is to the Gold Cup, the Tingle Creek is to the champion chase. So those are the two big ones. And to miss one... We thought we were only going to get to see him go against the best in Cheltenham. As it is, luckily, Willie Mullins has said, oh, well, we'll come and race you. And, and yeah. what a race it was. Was told that bouncing the next day, Shishkin, as well, although knew he had had a race, no temptation to go for the game spirit, straight to the champion but chase that's an now, interesting one. In just, just say next year, for example, uh, who would you fancy around Sandown? Energamine or, or Shishkin? For me, it'd be Shishkin. Round, uphill round, finish. Round Sandown on the sort of ground that you get in the Tingle Creek meeting, I would, I'd still favour Shishkin. Different horses are suited by different yeah. courses, right? So why are we not allowing Why are we not allowing the fact that absolutely, you know, they're worried, aren't they, about the one one ones a lot of the time and, you know, a bubble had to burst. If anything, you know, an Ergamine, is, his reputation has, has been enhanced because of that defeat. To go to Cheltenham, he might be suited more than Cheltenham. He doesn't have the Cheltenham tick, of course, which I keep calling it. Chishkin's been there twice and has won twice. So he's got that in his armoury as well, hasn't he? Will we see them at Aintree? Will we see them at Punchestown? I, I don't know. I'd like to think so. But now the other divisions have got to respond. OK, we've got to... See, ultimately, there are some people out there on social media this week saying, what are we going mad for? 
This is what we've been asking for. This should be happening more, at least three or four times a season. Two great one horses just taking each other on. That's as simple as that, isn't it? So yeah, well, that's racing, isn't it? Racing is not uh, one grade one horse turning up and just beating up on grade two yeah. and grade three performance. Racing against the best against the best. This is what we've been saying all season. Yeah. And now we've got it, I think. I think we're getting there now. Don't yeah. I hope so, anyway. Everyone on ITV absolutely buzzing afterwards. Sky was the same. You know, we all, and in the air as well. And it, it, what, however you were watching it, everyone was buzzing. So, look, that was that. Hard to top this week. But we are going to have a go. And shall we start in the 155? Uh, get your naps in. Get the social interaction. In fact, have we got a social interaction before I go to Barry in the first? That looks wide open, doesn't it? There, there you can see the exchange market. If you're new to the show, we'll be showing that throughout. Let's get the social corner up, guys in the gallery. Got Will and Carl there today. Now, Devo. Whoa. What's this, G-Rod? Great meeting G-Rod at Huntingdon yesterday. Come on, Spirit of the Games. Have you been throwing... You've not been tipping people Spirit of the Games at racecourses, man, have you? No, no, no. Devo gave me the tip of Spirit of the Games today when we, we had a, a brief conversation yesterday at Huntingdon. Lovely day at Huntingdon yesterday. Beautiful sunshine um, and some really good racing there as well. What were you doing there? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I uh, you know, our, our photographer Ed Whitaker, you know, he he, yep. he needed to take a few pictures of me. This is the so best equine photographer in the business. No yeah. disrespect to the others out there. Yeah. Some very good ones. So I was asked to go and meet Ed for a few, you know, pics to to to, to go for the 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 Cheltenham Rally. Is your stock yeah. going up in the world? This is where's my commission here? I mean, well, I'm telling the, you. The fun, it was really funny because I was standing outside the toilet for some reason. He what? chose. <laughs> He chose to do all the pictures. He's like, stand there. Stand. He's like, I mean, he's like, Graham, stand there. Stand of there. all the people he's taking photos of, McCoy, you know, O'Sullivan's and all that sort of, he puts you next well, you to a car. You know what Ed's like? He's, you know, he's very sort of um, exuberant. Isn't he? So he's, he's like, oh, Graham, stand there. And he stands me right in front of the toilet. So we're standing in front of the toilets. He's going, oh, you know, look this way, look that way. And all these people are trying to get across, and everyone's having a, a, a right old laugh here. It was mad. The big bear was outside the cars, he having his photo uh, you know, taken well, at Huntington uh, yesterday. I think but, I'm going to get a new byline picture because there's been a few people on here saying well, is how, how old's my byline picture oh, so it's, uh, it's not it's, that uh, old it's only like three or four years old but you, this this one should be you've been on. through them actually haven't you the changing you're like chameleon really you know but yeah anyway. well yeah you could you could profile my you had a good day in the sun though didn't you there you've actually back to 40 yeah, to one yeah back risk and roll yeah, I, mean, I won't even go to that but listen great that g-rod is going out and meeting you on, and you love to meet him and i used do the same with barry batches you're at fontwell tomorrow aren't you in the bumper yeah, in the bumper, yeah. There you go. If you're going to Fontwell tomorrow, go and throw some tomatoes at Matchy. <laughs> uh, OK, let's get back to the first then, shall we? Barry, wide open stuff. God, I made it difficult for us in the 155. Yeah, really. Uh, just before that word flagging the third time, Lukey just won up in Donny and is now 8-1 to one from 10-1 to one from the Arkle. So uh, just keep that in mind. But what we'll do first, please, G-Rod, we're going to place a lucky 15. Usually it's an each way one, but this time today I'm just going to do the win only lucky 15. We're going to do it for... Uh, we're going to do it for two quid. So it's going to cost us 30 quid. Two horses in Donny and two in Cheltenham. The first in Donny in the 245, unanswered prayers in the Novice Furrow. In the 320, then the feature race up there, the Sky Bet Chase. I'm going to put in the Kerry um, Lee horse, the machine. The two in Cheltenham, the first of the two is going to be, um, is going to be, I was going to put in simply the bets, but mm. I'm kind of gone off him now because I'm, the more I look at it, the more I think the trip is bang against him, regardless of the ground. Uh, 340, though, we're going to put in um, North Lodge. And then in the two, we might just do a Trixie, actually, G Rod. We'll okay. only do the Trixie. Yeah. North Lodge, 340, yeah. Yeah, so the three are going to be Unanswered Prayers, The Machine, and North Lodge. We're just going to do a, a Trixie, those three, and we'll do it for a tenner. Tricks, yeah. He is very interesting, North Lodge. We'll get to that later on. That's going to be very exciting, uh, that race, isn't it? Balco Coastal, not a lot of love for him at the moment. But, OK, business on. There you go, if you want to follow Barry in. That is the way to play. A small outlay, basically, for a lot of fun this afternoon. And don't have to play in every race. Safe gambling is the MO here at the Racing Post. And Betfair, of course. Uh, Barry, something else that I've really enjoyed this week. Nichols Natters, is that right? Or Natters with Nichols? Yeah, matter with Nicola. It's yeah. something I started doing on a Monday morning with Paul. Just looking back on what's happened the, the last weekend and then looking forward to the week ahead. So, obviously, la, um, during the week, he flagged up Danny Kerwin as one of his main hopes for the week. You're right, he hasn't had many runners, but he did flag up Miranda as well. She was due to run last Sunday. She just gave herself a little knock, but apparently she she does from time to time. But uh, he reckons she, he has her on song for today, so... That's interesting to see. But yeah, watch out for that again tomorrow morning at around uh, 10 or 11 o'clock. Lovely. I'll be tuning in. And uh, it's fair to say you're ramping up your ambassadors, Barry, isn't he? Because you've got you've got the big B coming to join the team. Brian Frost, great news. 
We certainly have. Delighted to announce during the week that Bryony Frost signed as an ambassador with Betfair. So watch out for her thoughts exclusively on betting.betfair and loads of video content as well with her. Uh, really excited about that. Obviously, she's had her trials and tribulations, with, which have been well documented recently. But I think it's hard. It, you have to remember, first and foremost, she's a very, very good jockey. And, and uh, we'll be looking to chart her throughout the season. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And the word is that working with Dave Orton and G-Rod and Barry has been, uh, has been on her bucket list. So you can <laughs> understand so. why they managed to get that signature over the line. All right, Barry, is there a single play in this first? There's an old favourite of ours here. Are you tipping him? Yeah, you know what, Dave, don't you? I've medals for this horse, Galahad's Quest. Uh, heard the good boy Bobby, which is decent form, obviously. Good boy Bobby has, has ran well in the Betfair rehearsal chase and then won the Royal America on Boxing Day. But third to him first time up in Weatherby this season. Then he was beaten about five and a half length in the Paddy Power chase. Disappointed in Liverpool after that. I'm disappointed last day. But I'm going to give him a chance. I'm just going to back him win only on the exchange because... I'm not sure about the stable form either. He's currently trading on the Betfair Exchange at 7.0. I'm just going to be a price maker here and look to back him at 7.2. So if you just tick that up to 7.2, G-Rod, we're going to look to have 25 quid on him at 7.2. That'll go over onto the lay column on the right-hand side, into the pink box. We want someone to come in and lay us that bet. So fingers crossed we'll get done. There's been a couple of springers in this race worth flagging up. There has been money for Spirit of the Games. That's almost half them price. There's also been money for what's now favoured in at se- uh, Horn and Frayed at 7.4 is now second favourite, but he's been well supported. He was as big as uh, as 12 to 1 earlier on. So two horses that there's been money for. But Galahad Quest, now your favourite, or now your second favourite at 7. 6.6 kill Cody to get off in front. 8.4 spirits of the games. 8.2 Jack Amar. I'd say he wants the ground considerably softer than this. And Horn and Frayed 7.4, but. I'm going to give Sir, uh, Galahad Quest a last chance. Last chance to learn for Galahad Quest. Oh, I'm following you in as well, Barry. I think if they hadn't just taken him to to entry that time, perhaps he just needed it last time. The ground was a bit soft. Of course, he won the juvenile race on this t- uh, card two years ago. I'm with him as well. Dave Noonan, I think, will smuggle him in and uh, he can finish a bit closer to Cool Cody this time. Uh, Tom and Fred, of course, the pick of Tom Seagull, who's having a wonderful winter as well as Tom me. Tom Seagull? Why. Tom Siegel, I said, didn't I? Not Siegel. Listen, you're the one for pronunciations. I, I'd be very, very careful this afternoon, by the way. I am being littered with armoury to throw at you. <laughs> ben Blackmore is doing our social, has actually got a copy of the pictures that Ed Whittaker took of you at Huntingdon. And I have to say, I have to say those, that Carsey obviously stank because some of those expressions on your face, are, you know, I mean, I, I, if, how Ed's going to whittle through them, I don't really know. But... Uh, we will have a bit of fun with that later on. Yeah, so Tom Seagal. Uh, I never know quite know how Tom pronounces his name. I always think if he's watching, he's going to have a pop at me. Uh, we've got loads coming up, of course, in the run-up to the Cheltenham Festival, and Tom's going to be heavily involved, so lots of things coming up. We're we'll doing plenty with Betfair on the line as well. Loads of fun we're going to be having. Great to have you watching this afternoon. Here, numbers are up, so let's keep these chat rolling in. Get your naps in. Got a quest for me, Batch? Do you know what? I did fancy Magic Saint. He ran here the last time, finished fourth, but... I- a couple of pools earlier races have flopped a little bit for Amazing me. how it can change yeah. you, isn't it? Sway your opinion. And do you know what? I think the twist in Davis horse, the form in the novice chase here, only beaten by my Drago, yeah. is good form and the better ground, all his herd, good herding form is on good, good to soft. He's going to appreciate this ground and Twistons are in a they're running well, so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna change and go for Torn and Frayed. Yeah. Sam Tristan Davis yeah. is having a really good year, isn't he? And Nigel obviously as well. Well, gee, where did we play? Uh, yeah, I mean, Magic Saint for me. Uh, I don't really worry about stable form. It's on the list of overrated angles, in my opinion, along with ground. Uh, I just think that a lot of the time it's factored into the price. I, when I woke up, I thought Magic Saint would be almost favourite for this race, and he now does, he's eight to one. He nicks one around here once a year, didn't he? I must yeah. admit, he is a threat to me. I think, but um, he's good around. I mean, he, he, he's lurkers. five pound lower than when he last won here. Yeah. And he's got Tom Buckley claiming They like five. to claim off him, don't they? Brian Carvey yeah. uh, successfully did it last season as well. Cool Cody, lovable Cool Cody. When he won, of course, the, uh, the Racing Post Gold Cup. What a highlight that was. Absolutely marvellous. So, um, OK, we're, we're nearly off and running. Any day is a good day when there's racing at Cheltenham, isn't there? But we are popping up to Donny as well. We've got a really interesting mayor's race, a very interesting Albert Bartlett trial, the River Don, and then the Big E, littered with quality, is the 320, the Sky Bet Chase. Well, we've got Champ coming up. How's he going to go? We've got Chantry House. Acid test for him today. Lots to look forward to. Good luck wherever you're playing. They're lining up. What more's an interesting horse here, isn't he? Had Henry Daly yesterday, as you might have seen on the feature show, and Henry said, it's, I don't know, he sort of double bluffed us. 
He said, he's keen. I need to get a run into him. And I said, what if he's having a blow coming to last, what's going to beat him? And he said, well, I hope he doesn't. So, uh, I don't know. It's a bit of a... You think perhaps the old racing post chase at Kempton might be the next port of call for him, if I was guessing. Cool Jack Cody going to jump off in front again, Dave? Cool Cody just leaves, yeah. isn't he? He always he does. does. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah, Spirit of the Games is up there as well. Good luck to Devo. Who you yeah, good luck to who Devo. To you. I did tell him that Spirit of the Games, you know, you could back that... Every time he runs, I mean, when when was the last time? If you could get ten places, it would be fine, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> well, you know where he's going to run, don't you? He's probably going to be in on and off the bridle, and then he's going to storm up the hill. He's a bit like Biowise, isn't he? Yeah, well, don't go there. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I tipped him earlier in the season. Spirit of the games, remarkably for one of these. I can't remember why. I, just... I think one did fall Biowise his way in the end, didn't it? Did it? I think it did. Mm, all right. Evan Williams also have a very good season as well. We are we're, we're over the halfway line of the jump season. It just gets better and better and better now. Every weekend coming up, there's just that Greatwood weekend, basically, the start of March, where everyone's waiting for Cheltenham, aren't they, to come. But the non-Cheltenham horses will get their chance to shine. Every weekend's yeah. a cracker, as is this race, and they're off. And the interesting thing is that Torn and Frayed is going to give Cool Cody something to think about. And Galahad Quest up there as well, over the first... Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Galahad All Quest over nearly took that fence with him. But he's got back up. Eden De Who out there for the pipes as well. Gaelic Coast there for the McCain's. McCain's had a very interesting debutant over uh, hurdles at Utoxeter early on. Did anyone see that? He is having some year again, Donald, isn't he? Back nearly in the big time. What more out the back with Magic Saint. Jack Amar as well is going to eat up that hill. Who haven't I mentioned? There is one right down the back. The outsider, well, one of the outsiders. She's a supermat. One for Ian Jardine. Great to see the Scottish Raiders coming down for this meeting as well. Gee, what sort of pace are they going? I don't know. Uh, don't think they're going mad. 30 miles an hour. <laughs> it's always 30 miles an hour, Barry. <laughs> it's always 30 miles an hour, which we can safely say is average. I, I saw think. something. But uh, when I throw to you and say what sort of pace they're going, I thought uh, you knew the game, I'm man. I'm supposed to pretend that I know. Um, well, I saw a piece with Ruby Walsh. I think it was on Racing TV. And um, he was saying that he used to count in his races between furlongs. And he, he'd, in his head, he'd go... Up to, and if he thought he was going between 14 and 15, he thought that was about the right speed. Did you ever do that match? I'm match? That. Match, match, match. <laughs> match, match. Well, I'm the master of front running, G. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I did. I counted. <laughs> Carruthers, of course, was the horse that you finished second on in the Cotswold Chase in 2010. Yeah. Oh, you didn't ask, you, T Tyrannis beat you. Do you remember that? Tyrannis, yeah. yeah. We come to a lot. I winged the last. And he still he was always travelling. You can Tyrannis, watch yeah. that back in your Tyrannis, members club, yeah. and you, you can see the final uh, uh, furlong or so there. Watch batch in the saddle, absolute poetry in motion. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to count between the next furlong, see if they're going 14 to 15. I'll tell you whether that's right or fast. Well, or whatever right. Ruby Walsh did was usually right, wasn't it? But I, I am surprised, dear guys, that they once again have let Cool Cody slip a little bit because what Adam Wedge does on this horse, he sits so quietly, doesn't really know he's in a race, and then after three out, he quickens and he takes horses out of comfort zone. Uh, uh, I thought Torn and Fade would try to take him on. Sam Twister's batch has obviously gone, no, I'm going to spoil my chance. Yeah, that's it. The thing is, you, when you join a horse like Cool Cody, it just makes him go quicker. So then you start taking each other on. So at some point, you've got to say, listen, this is not going to benefit either of us. So you've got to say, right, Cool Cody makes the run in, just drop back, as, as Sammy's done, and he's done the right thing. All right, OK, Barry, we're on the far side. We're about to go over the water jump. Has the market reacted? Yeah, Cool Code is your favourite now, 5.7. Spirit of the Games up there is 6.4. Uh, Galahad Quest out to 8. Made a bit of a mistake at the first, but you jump a great since. Torn and Frayed, 7.8. But Cool Code your favourite at 5. Point. When you know what you get with him, he's going to run from the front. He's going to run his heart out. But whether the whether he can keep it up today remains to be seen. Yeah, absolutely. Bounces off this ground as well. He's just a lovely, lovely animal, isn't he? OK, so it just looks like at the moment Ian Jardine's runner is feeling the pinch. It's a big rise up a glass of cheese. So Matt, Conor O'Farrell probably won't be winning Coast is coming right into it. He the is. Day. Yeah, Ooh. into 13. He's a bet for SP at 23, so he's nearly half the price. Oh, in running. On. This could be the day, couldn't it? Look at what more out the back. I was watching him. Henry Daly said he'd be keen. He is taking a tug, but this will be a prep for something. He's a big one in him. He's had a leg, but Henry's very happy where we're going. Of course, we've got Hillcrest coming up later on at 3.40, and we cannot see the biggest horse in training. Jack Amar now starting to wind up. This is where we're getting serious, Batch. Yeah, Jack Amar, he keeps taking a pull, Paddy. He just must be confident, but he's giving him plenty of room so he can see his fences. But yeah, he just keeps taking back there, Paddy. He must be confident. Yeah, he, he should eat this hill. If you yeah. remember at Kempton last time, two out, he looked stone cold, didn't he? And he came out and swallowed them up. Right, we are about five out, I think, aren't we? 
Beautiful. You're going to tell me I'm four out now. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, they're all to play for. What more? Just yeah, feeling the, the pinch the a little bit. The next one's four out, isn't it? It's a big yeah. ditch. Nick. Yeah. Come. Okay. Where's Magic Saint? He's going well, Magic Saint. Ooh, absolutely. Batch, you're going to be, be five in a row from, the for, for G Rod here. You are going for a five timer. Yeah. It's a remarkable thing. You never think you'd see. Oh, poor old oh, Watmore is down. Let's hope he gets up. Right. I don't want to see that, dude. Let's hope Watmore's okay. But cool, Cody still leads. Torn and fade on the inside. The novice unexposed. Galahad Quest now ranging up. This is the trickiest fence coming up back yeah because they're just starting to turn on the taps here so they need to you're praying to meet on a good stride and up cool we go cody. three out yes Ooh. cool cody got it well galahad quest got it well look at magic saint i'm on the saint oh i tell you what oh, all the people he, that have he's got behind bloody right galahad. Paul nichols at your pal look at gaelic coast as well first yeah. time wind off he didn't see it out gaelic coast it's it's so 2.4 for job. gaelic coast look at jackamon this nothing's going to eat the hill better come on galahad away. quest what have you got in the lineup Ma magic saint's just hit a flat yeah, spot i think he's struggling so cool cody in trouble okay we're coming to two out look at torn and on the inside galahad quest just about takes it up what we'll go. Come on, Galahad. What have we got? This is it. David Noonan sees a stride. Oh, yes, he's got a little bit bold. Sam Tristan Davis on yes, the inside. Sammy. It's Dave Orn and Barry Orr versus Tom Seymour. Yes, Let's Sammy. see what we've got. It looks he's like the novice is going to see it out best. You see one? Huh? This is one huh? for Tristan. Yeah. Oh, Batch has got it in the bag. Galahad yeah. quest on an absolute stormer. Maybe a little bit too soon. This on, was Sammy. a very well handicapped horse. 2 2 2 2 P. But he found the right race, Twiston Davis. He has streaked clear. Look at Spirit of the Game. Spirit Slow. of the Game's going to get out for second. No, he's going to be third behind Galad Quest, who's run a storm. A Gaelic Quest. Gaelic Coast, sorry. Maybe back down in trip. There's a race in him. Jackamar flattered to deceive at one point. Barry, when did they know? Uh, between the second last and the last, really, he just uh, he went to around the even money mark. Uh, Gaelic Coast, would you believe, had a low of 2.02. .02, so just a little over even money. Gala Coast, plenty of in running news there. Galahad Quest hit a low of 3.0. Cool Cody hit a low of 4.7. But yeah, the winner, like you say, well handicapped for us. He was well found in the market as well. Half in price from uh, from earlier or yesterday evening when he was about a 12 to 1 chance. He's a bet for SP of 6.6. .6. But uh, one I'm going to take out of that race was Magic Saint. I think he's going to be dropped another couple of pounds in the handicap. And he, there's definitely one of the big spring targets for him before the season's finished. And of course, absolutely wise. The first shout, beaten horses at this meeting have provided plenty of handicap success at the Cheltenham Festival. And could it be the Grand Annual potentially? I don't know. Have a look back at that then, Magic Saint. Didn't he cruise, G? Cruise, cruise, cruise. A lot of people are saying that Nichols also racing like drains. He just hit a flat spot, hasn't he? And hey, he, ran, he ran all right. Uh, he, he just, he was... He, he was, made mistakes early. Yeah, he was in trouble early. He was trading at a big price yeah. early. That might have been, been what cost him. But um, what about Spirit of the Game for, for Cheltenham? <laughs> Oh, always the same. Always, he's always the, the same. He'll always run on into a place he's you couldn't back him. There you go. Answered. And I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, he's not actually got second in the end, has he? Gaelic Coast was very much an eye catcher, wasn't he? Because he, I don't know, it's good to see Brian Hughes, isn't it, at Cheltenham, of course? Yeah, see it. They, you don't normally see him come down. He normally stays up north for, for Donald McCain. But Could have been at Donny today. You'd have had your house on that being in the free. It just. As you say, just dropped back in trip, Dave, I think. He yeah. Just, he travelled extremely yeah. well into the race. We covered the race when he was third at Musselburgh last time. You might have heard me saying running. He doesn't quite see it out there as well. So, uh, You'd be struggling stiff, if you don't see it out at Musselburgh. Well, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Hence, they gave him the wind off, yeah. I would imagine. Uh, let's hope Watmore's up OK. That was not the return that Ernie Daly would have wanted. Let's hope for better fortunes. Him. He's got a runner in the uh, River Don as well. We're watching him turning in then. At this point, the, the winner's under the pump, isn't he? What race do you think they're going to go for at the... At the Cheltenham Festival, would it be the plate or will they go up? Uh, yeah, the plate. Yeah, it's the twelve plate. to one for the plate, lads. I love it. Okay, of course, uh, not long, is it? We, we, we said on last week's show, didn't we? End of Feb, isn't it? Pretty much all the weights come out. The penultimate week in Feb, and yeah, then a the week later, March, the weights come out. I noticed that Rich Ritchie and Willie Mullins had one entered in the uh, in a handicap. It, it, you knew he wasn't going to turn up. And that is the what you call the, what, what I would call the Arthur Moore school. Enter one at this meeting. See what mark you're going to get. It's never run. Uh, perhaps someone out there, Eagle Eye, can tell me what it was. I've forgotten its name now. There's so many of these Rich Richie and, and Mullins horses. Three runs in France, so it's eligible for a mark. Mm. <laughs> and they wanted to see what they were going to get. Could that be the next gallop into Champ? Who knows? But there, there's a lot of there's a lot of jiggery and pokery going on at the moment. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Keep well, your eyes yeah. peeled. This is what the Irish are so good at, isn't it? They're better. Well, this is what the argument is. Here we go. They're better at doing that than our trainers are. At playing the game. 
playing the game. This is that what we're going? Is that it, what your um, call impending playing, column playing the is game? going to be? Called? Have I just given you your headline? Yeah, playing the game is probably the right phrase. Uh, they're better at hiding their light under a bushel. Is that Look fair? Look at that! Look at that! He's thought about this a lot. Yeah. You can imagine. <laughs> You've been winding up for this. You, you, uh, should is we just why? have a little touch on it before we go to Donny? What you are about to write in the paper next week? Give us a preview. Uh, yeah, I mean, my column starts on Friday. The new festival Friday. They made him a columnist. Post. I'm telling so you, I'm, I did. I do not want beer column. after this. I want Dom Perignon, on. Okay, that's what we're going for. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they decided to throw me a column. Don't ask me why, Dave. You know, but um, yeah, it should it's be a great move. Is that what the pictures were about? Uh, I hope they use some of them, although if they're as bad as you say they are, we, we will find out, though. But, um, yeah, no. They'll probably use them in that toilet for something else. <laughs> <laughs> it, only, it only took him ten minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> Bog standard was one comment, by the way, I saw. Bog Where have we gone on the screen? Yeah, Where yeah. are we? We've just gone, I think you've lost us on the screen. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, we tried to put a photo oh. up. It hasn't loaded. Now, we, uh, behind the scenes, they are trying to get this photo up. All right, we'll, talk, we'll have another little go at that later get on. Get your G-Rod toilet roll. Jesus. <laughs> Bog standard, I thought, was a great call from Devo. Yeah, all right, we're back. All right, we'll try and get that photo up for you. Uh, Torn and Frayed played the game last time, says Paul Bakewell. Paul, good to have you out there. One of our regulars as well. Uh, all right, so we're off and running at Cheltenham. Let's go up to Donny, shall we? And there is a... This could be... Pivotal time for Paul Nichols, couldn't it, Barry? Because the lovely Miranda comes out to play again. Yeah, like I said, she, he's Paul said on that matter with Nichols that we uh, air on Twitter on a Monday morning that she just gave herself a knock and she was the race last Sunday. She didn't, but she's coming back for a repeat victory in this race. She won it last year as well. She's had her flu jab and all that. Briny ride. She's currently 2.08, so she's on a little bit of a slide. She was a shade of odds on. Anna Benina, who the ground could be gone against, looking at the times up there bit of black type hunting by the Irish trainer, John McConnell. Um, I was giving it a chance, 4.6 now. But I've just landed on Western victory. Um, the horse ran in Ascot last day and traded at 1.74 in running on the Beffer Exchange. It was really, really fresh and went off at an absolute crazy pace. Now, if the freshness and fizz is taken out of her, she could definitely put it up to the favourite. The favourite, obviously, carrying the penalty is set to carry 11.8. Western victory, 11.6. She's getting two pounds, which brings her on ratings bang into contention in this race. One's an even money chance, and the other one is currently 5.8, so over 9 to 2. So I think the value lies with Western victory now. Like I said, Anna Benina was going to be my bet, but I think the ground's gone for her just looking at the times. I think it's plenty soft up there now in Doncaster. So we're going to have a 25-quid win in place, please, here. And we're happy to be price takers, G-Rod. Going to take the 5.8 Western victory in the win, and then just in the standard place market, we're going to, which is two places, we're going to take it at 2.66, which is just 13 to 8. So, happy to be a price taker. Western victory. Hopefully, the fizz is taken out of her after her last race and she'll settle a little bit better in front today. She's a, she's, she is a head scratcher for me, Barry. I put her up. Uh, she's one of my favourites. She's run through a brick wall for, uh, for you, wouldn't she? And she's inherited her Emma Lavelle, of course. Tom Bellamy, did you see that ride last week? What, what was that a case of? If you're a jockey, I thought, hey, hang on a minute. You've got another five hurdles to go here, man. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> As a jockey, he made a decision, he's gone out in front. He knew she was going to be keen. Get her out in front, hopefully she switched off. He and wasn't at all hardener when challenged, was he? He no, knew. No, and I just echo everything Barry said there. That's why I've gone with her, because right. I just think the better ground at Donny, the fizz has been... T they say exactly what Barry says. Miranda's got £8 more on the back than when winning last year. She said, not last time, as Barry said. Bryony will be looking forward to this ride. Do you think we're looking at gift horse here? I've put up Anna Bonina. She is a good ground mare, though. They've been watering at Doncaster. So what? They put too much on. Apparently, they put too much on, yeah. Oh, it, a lot of giving out. It, I mean, there was, yeah, right, OK. It doesn't surprise me. The mud was kicking up. It was like kick back at Old Southwell, wasn't it? On the fibre sand yesterday there. So what have you gone for, G? Uh, yeah, I, di I didn't put up one for this. This was a one race of the whole day that I thought I would sit out. I don't really like mares races on, in general because I think there's a huge disparity between the top, top mares and the other ones. Well, there's a mixed bag here, isn't there? You've got Dazzling Glory. I mean, Miranda will probably win it. Miranda will probably win. Well, I mean, the mm. only reason that she's this big is is because of the Nichols factor, is it not? You remember Lady Buttons used to rock up here. The great yeah, Lady Buttons yeah. used to rock up. And she it was, was always, always a dramatic finish. Mm. So buckle up, basically. You travel so well, that horse. Very short price then, Miranda. And uh, you were hoping that Nichols would get this over the line, I suppose, Barry. Um, it, it, she's going to go bigger than that in running, isn't she, surely? 
You would have thought, yeah, she has a habit of trading bigger and running as well, Dave. I think in her last couple of runs, uh, she traded 48 last day when she won, would you believe, in running. She had a bet for SP at 2.21. So I think yeah, like we know how the race is going to be run in that um, obviously Western Victory is going to go off and, and set a decent gallop back to two miles as well. Um, Miranda will be held up. Uh, Miss Heritage will probably be prominent and the others will be tucked in behind. So it's going to be a tactical affair, but hopefully... Um, Western Victory and Tom Bellamy can get the run of the race in front. Well, she's doing that, Barry. They're off and running. They're over the first. And yeah, he's <laughs> surprise, surprise. Tom obviously knows her a lot better now, Barry. Yeah. Uh, she's she's being a bit more tractable, let's put it that way. She wants to go quicker, though, doesn't she? Yeah, she wants to, but she's a bit more relaxed. And I see, yeah, Miranda's just sort of on her girth. It'd be interesting. Bryony might just sit on Tom's girth just to try and make her keen, you know, just to, as a jockey, that's sort of tactics you do. He's he settled her nicely and B, you might be going saying, right, let's try and just try and put her off, really. A lot of these horses can run keen. We know them all very well by now, don't we? Yeah, yeah okay, so there. two going wide. One of them, Bryony Frost, and follow your neighbour, says James Bowen, because Anna Bonina going out wide as well. This is the good ground mare, of course. Tommy's Oscar last time. She drifted terribly in the betting because it was her first run back. John McConnell, Barry, let's come to you. He's a really good target trainer. He's got one in the River Don as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he has indeed, yeah. He's a good trainer. He's a small string in County Mead, but he's well able to get one ready. Yeah, but like you say, this mare is very ground dependent, as you can see, even by the way uh, James Bowen has gone wide in search of better ground. All right, then. So well, let's find out who's best. Right out the back, Bridget Andrews. Uh, uh, oh, it is Harry, of course, isn't it? He's up there, of course, for third time lucky. I, it's just, I don't know whether she's totally outclassed or, or, or what of 118, but they always drop her out anyway. Uh, what sort of gallop are we going? Nothing like she did last week, of course, Western Victory. No, they're still going... Quick enough, but it's a two-mile race, Dave, so expect that, but not as quick as Ascot, no way. No, we haven't, of course, we've switched to, uh, to, to, to different stations now, so we well, haven't 13 got 13-second furlong, yeah. Ruby Did you wouldn't count be that, impressed. Did you count Ruby that? would not Ruby, be impressed Ruby thinks that. they're going too fast. Absolutely. Oh. I think, well, I'll tell you what he used to do in his races. He used to get that as a target sitting next to us and pounce on him at the last, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a friend. <laughs> oh. What a friend with Carruthers, of He's course, in the nemesis. bowl. Yeah. Second in the bowl, career best run. Where's Ruby, said McCoy to you turning in, didn't he? And uh, turned out he was just about to pounce I said, oh, he's behind us. I didn't say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here comes the cavalry. It's Ruby again. All right, great stuff then. We're on the far side at Donny, and uh, they're emitting a fence uh, in the sky bet chase. We think it's the, the ditch, ditch, don't we? The ditch, yeah. yeah. A bit of low sun up there as they go out of view at Doncaster. So definitely I'm, going too fast. You're running that's, carnage, that's, I imagine, at the moment with the camera. The cameraman's work. missed it. He's like, hang on a minute. Oh, that must be them. awful, must not it? Straight. Here they come. They've gone round the bushes. Fine. And Western Victory, I don't know. If you're on Western Victory, I'd be very happy, I think, at the moment. But he's uh, just having a little niggle at Miranda, you know. She's really tough, yeah, Western she's Victory. She's like that, though. Yeah, Moran, yeah, it, is she like that? Yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll keep going. All right, OK. And, Although uh, someone said last week, you can't go too fast on Western Victory. Anna Benina just looking in a bit of trouble now, isn't she? She's just slightly outpaced. And I'll tell you what, Miss Heritage, she's just been a big going. day in the sun. Plenty to find at the weights, but she's classy and she's a strong traveller. No, now won't, Western won't Victory be on the leader. then. All right, off we go. in the market all over Miranda, Barry. Yeah. Yeah, two's on now, Miranda. But uh, Miss Heritage, Heritage is going right. well. I don't know. Is that a bit of a reaction there? Let's see. Oh yeah, out to, it's going out oh, all the time. Your favorite now at she's absolutely money. cruising this. I mean, oh. this is this will be a case of others running below par because she's a proper one thirty mare. But this will she, be a career best. What she got left? She now Bryony Frost she? usually yeah. rides this, and she'll be watching this and thinking, "Oh my goodness, I got to ride oh, for the governor." Miranda walks through that. She needs it again. Paul Nichols' form will come under scrutiny. Yeah. It's the flu vaccination January, and this is a race that has fallen apart as Miss Heritage Streets clear. 101 before you know it. Just got a hurdle to jump. Let's watch her pop it over. Sean Quinlan says nothing. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Careful, but she's over fine. She could have taken that with her and still won, I think. Uh, Miranda plogging on for second. Western Victory surely found it a bit tough, didn't she? And she's a horse that probably wants a bit further as well. And uh, Anna Bonina didn't turn up. Looks like they have turned on the taps a bit much. But Barry... They went very low on Miranda. Burnt fingers. Yeah, Miranda traded at a low in run. At a bet fair SP at 207, so it was a little bit weak post-race considering she had the odds on. She traded at 1.55 in running, Dave, which is 4 to 9. Anna Benina never went lower than 3.8, which is around the 11 to 4 mark. Or 11 to 4 mark. Western victory uh, didn't trade low at all. He didn't really make as, as much use of her as he probably should have. 
Uh, obviously, what happened in Ascot was in the back of his mind, but Miss Heritage, yeah, she went short before jumping the last, and she scooted clear to win by about 20 lengths. She had a bet for SP of 11.7, so a uh, good result for the layers there. Uh, very much so. And yeah, like I say, she's a lovely, lovely mare. She's, uh, she started off uh, with Elsie, didn't she, in her career? I remember she won a Catrick bumper on really bad ground. We thought this is going to be a right one. She's had problems settling. She went to Lucy Waddams, but this is job done. That is going to enhance her. It's going to have a hike up, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> one, very two, much seven, so. beat. And like I say, Bryony usually rides that. So. Yeah, she's won on it before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, she has. Yeah, she, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, so a race that <laughs> fell apart. So if you're expecting good ground up at Donny, you might want to think again. It looks pretty tacky, doesn't it? We'll check the time of that, but. Have they turned the taps on a little bit too much on the town more? Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think about that. We must return to Cheltenham, though. I'm delighted to say the Cotswold Chase is coming up. Now, this was run at Sandown last year. It turned out to be one of the races of the season with Native River, seeing off Bristol to of course. All the good ones in there. Barry, let's come to you with this. Chantry House, so much to prove after disappointing. Well, did he disappoint in the, in the King George? They whacked him in the betting, didn't they? He finished up 3-1 to one favourite in the King George. Did he disappoint? He pulled up. Now, obviously, he was taken out of his comfort zone early doors by the two headbangers going off, toe-to-toe yeah. -to -toe in Manila, Indo and Froden. But you'd have to say, you know, it's too bad to be true. Like, the way they punted him. To finish up 3-1 to one favorite in the King George from what he was, 5 or 6-1, to one, takes a massive volume of money. So, very disappointing run. They're reaching for the, for the uh, cheap pieces for the first time as well, which is a bad sign itself, Dave. Um, sharpen him up. This is a stepping stone to the Gold Cup. Obviously, he's a 16 to 1 chance for the Gold Cup. I can't have the second in simply the bet. Obviously, you know, two, three mile, one furlong around here. He was unconscious on bad ground, it has to be said, though, in Aintree when he tried to trip for the first time. Paul says in his blog, which you can read exclusively on betting up there, that, you know, Harry Cobden felt that he was, he was worthy of another try at this trip. I can't see it happening. Uh, I can't have him. I write. Decent winner of the Betfair is a Hurstle Chase. He's traded a short 1661-3278 in a long sequence of losing runs before he got his head in front in the Betfair uh, rehearsal chase. That is the old boat, Santini, 14.5. Where do you go here? I just don't know. I want the lay Chantry House, but I don't know what's going to beat him. So I think it's a sit-out for me, Dave. I had all intentions of laying Chantry House, but I can't have simply the best. What I might do, actually, just for the charity, here we I'm going to go. lay... Gonna lay simply the bets in the place market, G Rod. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. One point eight nine years at the moment. Let's take a hundred quid out of him, a hundred quid of the backer stake out of him at one point eight nine. Cause I, I just don't think he'll get the trip. If I, he could be the type of horse he gets dropped a couple of pounds for a run in this. If he was to run well, he could still get dropped a couple of pounds and could put him in contention for some of those big festival handicaps uh, in the spring festivals. So yeah, gonna take on simply the best in the place market. He won the Novice Handicap, of course, didn't he? So he is a festival winner. He's won twice around Cheltenham. He ticks all the boxes historically for this. One run at three miles. He pulled up. The problem with him, Batch, is he's been keen, hasn't he, this chat? And unlike Chantry House, who, who's who got one three three one around Cheltenham, he's three from four in small fields. If he bounces back, it's it, I think it's pretty hard to see him being beaten here. But why is he on the drift? And simply the bets is the one. If Nichols can turn him in, to a three mile, it opens up all sorts of opportunities. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he, he doesn't look like a three miler to me. He has got a bit of toe. Chantry else was so bad in the King George. I was, I was looking through the form, and yes, he has one right handed, one at sand down, but it was a two runner race and the big breakaway. So he hasn't really had much opposition. Yeah. Back at Cheltenham. Yeah, he's going to have to. I think you could put a line through to King George and just say, the old Chantry House scoots up, but he's on the drift. But I like, I too like R. Right. I just, he's my sort of horse. He gives you 110% every time you run. And I just, for the Grahams, I just think he's, he's a great horse to have. And I, I'd, I'd love him to see him win this round here. He's a character, isn't yeah. he? Because he's got a legion, yet when he hits the front, he does tend to pull himself up a little bit. They could have gone for the sky bet again, of course. And, uh, they're coming here. One five nine would have been a feat there, but he's nine year old now. They're having a crack, a little bit like Tommy's Oscar, isn't it? Like you know, uh, and um, and the Hamiltons last week. It's to good see to see these smaller the yards with grade, graded horses. Where do you sit with this then? Uh, there was a weird period about 20, 25 years ago where the best prep for a Gold Cup was to pull up in the King George. I remember Seymour Business running an absolutely abysmal race in the King George and then winning the Gold Cup. Looks like Trouble did exactly the same, ran an abysmal race in the King George and then won this and then won the Gold Cup. Yeah. 
And that's what Chantry House is obviously trying to do here. I thought it was interesting they stick the cheap pieces on now. Why, why do it now? And not that is an interesting move. Cup? He got a bump at the second fence by Lost in Translation, messed him about early. They obviously rate him, don't they? I mean, oh, yeah. They yeah. punted him. The money was surprising, the volume of money, I think. Huge that's, for I'm, the, King I, the reason why I said, did he actually disappoint? I'll stop myself a little bit there because they pulled him up. It's not like he, it's not like he got to two out and then just didn't deliver. It just was too bad to be true. I remember straight after the race thinking if there was one horse to back for the Gold Cup, it had to be Chantry House because the bookmaker was going to knock him out huge. Yeah. And that definitely wasn't his run. It definitely wasn't his run. He, he has got a bit to prove though, hasn't he? And, and um, I don't think simply the bets will stay either. Uh, so I'm with I right as well. Oh. Yeah. I, right, like, right. I like matches, matches shout. The thing is, another thing mm. with Chantry House is that when you've got Nico de Bonville rides for Henderson, now... If that would have been anyone else on Chantry House and the King George, as a jockey, like, oh, it's really fancied for this. You try and go, you, you're hoping that something might happen, he might pick up, and you sort of, you could be probably go and jump another four or five for Hence is too much. Mm. But the thing with Nico and Henderson's relationship, Nico's like, no, nah, this is not going. He's pulled him up. If you, if you watch it back, and you have got 10 minutes to do, watch the early stages. He does get that bump, and it was kind of... I know all eyes were on it, and, and we covered it on Boxing Day. We posted it, didn't we, when you had your moose out on? Yeah. And um, Nico was very quick to try and get him back. In, if that, what I'm saying is, take the race away. If that was just a tactical affair during the week, when you see a horse that tries to hold its position like that, you know the expectancy is there. They do rate him. Kiel's did a piece about him, didn't they? In the, uh, uh, in the week, was it the weekend? The Kills did his piece in it, and he said we've got to give Chantry another chance. Oh, I'm just surprised, Barry. He's as big as he is. Yeah, he's uh, what's he currently trading at? He's one nine four now, so he has been little even money. Um, I suppose punters aren't are were burnt. Their fingers were burnt in the King George when he was back into three to one. He's pulled up his last run. It's hard to back a horse at a shade of odds on after being pulled up in his last run, isn't it? It's difficult to mm. give him that sort of confidence, to give Hunter's confidence. So that's why he, he's hovering around there. But all the soundings from, from Nicky Henderson are that, you know, the horse has turned inside out since that day. And obviously he must have been showing them plenty that he suggested to maybe connections or other people that he was worthy of a few quid, having a few quid on him for the, uh, for the King George. So, you know, if you put a line through that, well then he'd be, if you've, if he didn't run into King George, he'd probably be a three or four is on chance in this race, but he did. Right, but he he didn't he didn't get a hard race, did he? Is what I'm saying. He was pulled up the no, six yeah. to jump. If after three fences, he's still hovering around about that price, and he looks like he's winging every single one. This is this is bet time, isn't it? What price is he in the sports book for the Gold Cup, Barry? Just throwing you a sixteen a there. Sixteens. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he could easily be a lot shorter than that after this, couldn't he? Has McManus got another Gold Cup or well, something? champ? Oh, champ's going to stay, <laughs> isn't he? We know that. We've got him to come, of course, on the show. I wondered whether a lot of people would be doing the double, but Barry's right, with a P next to the name. This isn't quite the Shishkin John Bomb double, see, is it? It's um, Barry pull out the boat comment. I thought we might... Oh, we I wondered who was going to pick that up. <laughs> but, uh, Santini, Santini the boat. Santini now, the Chantry boat. House is going down the Santini route because Santini before went in that intermediate chase, didn't he? He won that. Yeah, and he, he was he very won, unimpressive. He won this race, Santini, didn't he? Two years ago. He did. When he was with Nicky Anderson. And Santini the boat. Third in the Gold Cup then, wasn't he? Yeah, well, did, now, did he not put Santini, did he not put cheap pieces on him in the Gold Cup after this race? Now, why are cheap pieces today with Chantry he and not He saw off wait? Bristol Demire, didn't he? Do you remember Bristol nearly took the second yeah. last with him, didn't he, that day? And still, it, but yeah, he was getting two pounds. I've got a funny feeling he might run well. Who? Santini. San, what, for Polly Gundry? Great oh, I've got a funny yeah. feeling he's going to run well. It's a small field. They're not that good, are they? Apart from Chantry House. And, and if he can stay with them, he'll definitely win if he's anywhere near them after the last. Yeah. I well, can see him running well, but... Yeah, I write's a real tough horse as well. Someone said that I write and he takes every 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 fence home with him when he comes to Cheltenham in the paper. Uh, I think it was in the Saturday jewellery today. Someone said whenever he comes to Cheltenham, his jumping lets him down. Who was that? It wasn't the front running Chris Cook, was it? Said it that, might well have been Chris it. Cook. Yeah, his I, I, Cheltenham record is six five three, of course. That yeah, three but, was but in the, the Ultima, wasn't it? <laughs> the three was in the Ultima, seventeen runner handicap. Yeah, yeah. It was going a million miles an hour. Do you think and, he'll yeah. lead I write? Do you think he'll lead? Because the pace in this is quite interesting, yeah, isn't it? Who's going to go on? Will, yeah. I mean, yeah. I Santini might on. go on with it. Simply the bets I don't imagine will, because A, the trip, and he can be a bit fizzy. Chantry House, unlikely. Corto Rico, loads to find, but uh, he, he usually sits oh, out. Yeah, he, he, I, I thought Chantry House would go off in front. Did you? 
Keep it simple, yeah, off we go. I thought with the cheek pieces, they'll just say, go on, stride on, let them see every fence. There's only, what, four other runners in the, or there's only four other runners in the race. So mm-hmm. let them stride on, put the cheek pieces on, keep them concentrated, jump from fence to fence. I'll see why not. I don't think you can excuse any horse jumping bad at the festival, G. Yeah. Oh. It's a totally different pace. 17 runners. Yeah, it's a totally different ball game around there. It'll be a different race to this one. Of course it will, yeah. When was the last time this was run on good ground? That's the other thing to say, isn't it? Let's have a little look down. In fact, it hasn't been in the last 10 years. Heavy ground, of course, at Sandown last year, but Santini was soft. Uh, Definitely red. Do you remember when he won? Many clouds was the other 10 yards when it's mad place. Many clouds the year before that as well. The giant bolster won this, of course, in 2014. Cape Tribulation, you remember from Lake Mad called Jefferson. A midnight chase. And Stanley Clark colours back in 2012. The, 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 the Corto Rico is 50 to 1, and everyone's, but he's not out of it either because he always rockets home over two and a half and looks like he wants three. Yeah. He's from the family of Corto Star and Corto Stone, who both stayed three miles, so he's bred to stay. He's the sort of horse who could improve for a step up and drip. The worry is all of his best form is fresh, Corto Rico, and he's not fresh yet. No, all right, fair enough. So that's the field. Where are you playing? Let's get some social reactions up. You can see the spotlight selections there. Sam Caney comes up. Ah, now, I think I know, Sam. Let's be honest. If Chartree House runs in the Gold Cup, he'll be lapped. I know, Sam. I I know Sam's dad sold me a car. Yeah, he did. He's a lovely man. He's just getting into racing, Sam. He's the future. And he absolutely loves the game. Well, tell Sam's dad to come older, Sam. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he won't, he'll, never lack for, he'll never lack for impressing girls with cars, Sam. Never, yeah. ever. He's <laughs> some good motors out there that, si- that his dad Simon got. Sam, great to have you out there. Uh, OK, so, yeah, let's be honest. If Chantry has fun to the cold cup, it's going to be lapped. Strong opinions, which we love here. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, no, yeah, I love anyone. Would you got give him any chance if he game. wins this well in a gold cup? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's 16 to 1. It's a potential oh, thing. I'll tell you, those Irish horses at the top of market ain't that good. Here we go. Is this going to figure in your play the game comment, uh, t- 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 a column next Friday? Well, what's favourite? Is it is it uh, that thing that won by my Haydock? Can't even remember its name. Appleton. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Galvin's up there as well, isn't it? Appleton. Yeah, well, fr- let's not forget Froden beat Galvin out of sight, pretty much. Yeah. Well, not outside. Five of the first six in the easily. bet are Irish horses. Mm. But Takarad is the is the shortest UK priced horse, and he wants it like a bug. Are we a bit surprised that he's? Yeah, it, it must be the ground as really, I thought he would be at least entered oh, at the start. We, of the we win the Gold Cup. Are they going to go straight to ain't, uh, uh, to Cheltenham with Protectorat? Must do now, yeah, must yeah. they? Yeah, go straight there. He's got a very good record fresh as well, hasn't he? Uh, prize money is up by 30% at this meeting, and yet we've got the small fields because of the ground. A word about that, chats, because it, it, we, look, we're a bit worried about the Dublin Festival as well. We have seen it at that Dublin Festival before, haven't we? Leopard's Town can get dry. Here we are dry. We started off with a drought. December was kind to us, and the start of Jam was as well. I mean, Lingfield last week, how did you enjoy the Winter Million series? It was a co- proper bog, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. But no, yet now, now there's not yeah. much rain on the top, but it always yeah. is no. at Lingfield. Yeah. Uh, it would be in July, wouldn't it? I know, it? it's, just, <laughs> it's just uh, it's a dull subject, isn't it, that, that, that we get all the time. Yeah, but it is what it is, and we are seeing some stars today. Uh, let me give you a word from James Stevens, who joins. He's going to join us in about 20 minutes to give you the, all the hot news coming up and the immediate reactions after this as well. Uh, Nigel Tristan Davis on Torn and Frey. This is quite interesting. We will definitely have a look at that. And he's put in brackets, Cheltenham Festival Handicaps. It must be the plate he's on about. Mm. But we could also look at the Topham and the same colours have won it with Irish Raptor. Do you remember that in 2009? Well, that's going oh, back, finished third, isn't it? He jumps like a bunny. Yeah. Irish Raptor, yeah. 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 He, um, does, he does jump well, yeah. He's... So the Topham, that's, a, that's, a, that's of course like the, the mini national, isn't it? You call it, you know, two mile five. Two mile it? five, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was run by Live Love Laugh. Do you remember that? Oh my Lord, where did that come from? Anyway, so that, that was, that's that where. That was a key shout, done. wasn't it? That was a, well. He he jumped off it. He told he jumped off it. Joe Chambers to tell Rich Ritchie to run Love Love Love. He did, and then he put something else. I think they finished in the frame against him. Didn't he? Yeah, and then he <laughs> I think it was daylight, wasn't it? it? Yeah. Yeah, he, I remember we were covering it on the show, of course. And That's he was a life in the of a tipster, that is, isn't it? You see yeah. one from a while out, and then change your mind That's, on the day. That is how the game, isn't it? Very much so. All right, okay. We are not far away from the 2022 Cotswold Chase. Like Santini, Santini might jump off in front. There, yeah. What price then, Barry? They're not going evens, are they? Uh, they are. They're not far off it, to be perfectly honest with you. Currently trading at 1.96. It has been 202 just a minute ago. 4.5 simply the best. I write 5.7, 11.5 5, Santini at 75 Puerto Rico. We're a little bit surprised that Santini's only 12 to 1. No. Uh, well, I thought he'd be bigger. He yeah. could make all, couldn't he? 
Oh, they, look, we don't know what's going to lead. So they are. They're going to jump off in front, yeah. off in front yeah. here on Santini. Yeah, yeah. So simply the bet. If, if they're going to jump as they line up, as you're watching it, look, guys. Look, it's interesting. Barry thought it might be Chantry, and he definitely wants a piece of it, doesn't he? But Santini's up there as well. There could be, be a lot of pace on. Yeah. And uh, I right as well. He's having to think about. It. He's a white old character, isn't he? I right. It's not much of him compared to the rest of them, are they? Now, this is going to be a fascinating tactical battle. Well, Good you, luck wherever you're playing. Yeah, you First time cheap pieces, then on Chantry House, bidding to bounce back. The class animal, of course, he's run twice before the King George in Grey Run Company over fences, won them both. Did he get lucky? A lot of people thought at the start of the year he could be a Ryan Ayles. No, it's the Gold Cup route for him. Here we go then. This is going to be thrills and spills all the, the way. And let's see if they're going 30 mile an hour when we get the clock. <laughs> Are you counting? Now, simply the bets. The worry about him with the small field is he's going to pull. He's definitely doing that. In fact, he's running away with them to the first. Uh, Corto Rico a little bit slow at the back, but you know that Brian Hughes will be hunting around for potluck as they go. And it is, if this is some boat, he's yeah. a speedboat, isn't he? Because Santini has jumped on. <laughs> the boat's off in front. I'll tell you what, he's, <laughs> he's winging them. In their way. Look at his, he should be running in the King's Stand, shouldn't he? This is fantastic <laughs> stuff. But I right is taking a tug in third. Chantry House getting a nice toe. A couple of lengths back to simply the bets. Very interesting to see what Harry Cobden can get at him at the business end of the race. Okay. The, uh, the positions are there, Barry. Has that altered the market at any at any reason at all? Simply the bets drifted out. Yeah, simply best out to six point two after jumping two fences. Yeah, uh, Puerto Rico out to seventy off the back of the two fences jumped. Your favourite's hardened though. He's one point nine zero now. Chantry House just jumping the water there. He's a bit untidy at that. I write four point seven had a bet Ferris be a five point five. So I write nice and handy as well. Seems to be a good level pace. Yeah, and they're not. It's interesting they got Shantry on the outside after what happened to him in the King George after that bump. They just want to get him into that rhythm. Uh, Corto Rico already starting to find this a little bit hot, isn't he? Okay, so look at High Right. He is tiny, isn't he, compared to Santini? I'll yeah. tell you what, Santini has absolutely eaten these fences, isn't he? What price has he got? He he's short. Do the size of <laughs> this is great. Eight point zero. Great to see these characters, and they love a front runner, Barry, don't they? They do, yeah. I, I wasn't expecting them to get off in front, but he's enjoying it out there, the old boy. But like, they're only they're going a very married man's pace, as Batch would say. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you, there must have been a temptation to send him down the hunt and chase route. Must have been. He could have mocked up there, couldn't he? With Polly, yeah, Did definitely. Yeah. Polly route, you know. Yeah, right? absolutely. Especially with Polly. They obviously think he's better than that. Don't well, they? he's, yeah. he's out jumping them. There's no doubt in that. Chantry just got a little shake of the reins there. Oh yeah, look at that Barry. He's gone right out. Yeah, he's at the 2.38 now, or 2.34 uh, Chantry House. Yeah, 3.7 I write, 5.6 Santini net. <laughs> 5.6, well, okay, this is, again, well, I don't know, simply the bets are set well, right Chantry now as well. House. I don't know, I find it very hard to call it. I just, it's very hard not to be taken by the claims of Santini after a couple of fences, isn't it? He's I mean, going to go close, isn't he? Has he got any headgear on? He hasn't, has he? So, I don't know. He's kind of like sticking two well, fingers up sure to Nicky I'm not sure I want to be taking Chantry. <laughs> uh, Chantry's in trouble, isn't he? All right, this is the third last first time around then. Yeah, Chantry doesn't he, look like he's enjoying he himself. He's up and down on the bridle. I said after three fences, if he's got him into a good rhythm, that price will crash. It's gone the other way. What do you reckon out there? Uh, we are watching you in the chat. A lot of you on with uh, I right in the without my market. So, I don't know. Um... Harry Cobden just observing in the middle as well, isn't they? I wonder if they've got a plan for this chap. And still, that Nichols thing out there at the moment. Yes, it's January, but we're very close to February. It needs to start turning at some point. All right, this will be the last, last time around. And Santini still jumping fantastic. Well, Batch, if you had to be on one. I'd still be on my own eye right at the minute. Still, he's enjoying it. But as I say, it's great to see the old boy Santini. He's absolutely loving it. His ears are pricked. And Santini's out. Nick, who's just said, right, Putting it up to him now. Yeah. He, he responded there as well, didn't he? He, did, he asked yeah. him for a biggie and he came Simply up. Simply the best, getting to hurry up. Yeah. Oh, this, I tell, he's already been given a reminder by Harry Cobden. That is not good if you're on the former festival winner. No. Okay, yeah, this could be, have a P next to his name, couldn't it? And Brian Hughes is I in tell no you, hurry the, to the overtake boat, him. The boat is flying <laughs> along, isn't he still? The boat is tugging he's along. He's loving it, isn't This it? is, honestly, I'm trying Absolutely. to think of Nico will take it up now. Let him see his fences, Nico, and stride on with the horse. He's, that's what he's trying around. to do. I yeah. think that's exactly what he's trying to do, isn't it? 
So, okay, Where's yeah. the boat now, G-Rod? Oh, oh, yeah, he's gone back because you've given him the curse. The boat. He's dropped anchor, the he's boat. He's dropped anchor. He'll be running in the National, the boat, I think, looking at this. <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> he's still there. Come on, Santini. Let's see what you got. The Nick's boat's Schofield. over the water jump. Oh, yeah, he nearly <laughs> sunk there, didn't he? No, he's going all right. Simply the bets is responding a little bit, to be fair, but it's very hard to see him winning. I mean, some character, maybe they'll be thinking about Edgar if he runs on again. The widest of all still, Sean has fiddled that one. Now I write takes it up. Let's see how Santini responds. Brian Hughes now kidding Corto Rico into a little bit of contention as well. I don't know. I'm not sure what to make about Chantry House at this the point. The boat's coming back. The boat is coming. The Look boat him, is he's coming back. back. I'm trying to think of classy yachts. What's Abramovich's <laughs> yacht called? You know, like this is what he, he's an absolute. Beautiful QE2. looking horse. QE2. QE2. This is going to be a thriller. It's not the Titanic one. at the end. Go on, I right. right, 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 right. Come on, boys. Let's get that the volume in here. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Ivan. Right. Right. Ivan. 20 I right. 7 uh, to 4 Chantry House. 7 to 2 the boat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the boat is coming back. I'll tell you what. He's absolutely smoking away. Chantry House. Goodness Beautiful. gracious me. How Beautiful. is he still 2 to 1? That's going to go up surely now, isn't this it? This is going to be a race day. How do they still believe, look, that Chantry House is going to pick him up? This is going to be a race. He's 2 to 1. 3.05 Chantry House. No, this is incredible. Surely. He's not going a yard, is he? You can not see why yet. they've put on the cheap pieces now. The clues were there. Right, here we go. At the top of the we're four out now, aren't we? Chance so number 14. Over we go. Corto Rico, still the back marker. Simply Come the on, best. Right. Horrible ride right for Harry Cotton, Come on, isn't it? Right. And another reminder of him. Look, you just get the feeling that he He's might do there, a yard Enki here. Okay, Chantry's coming back. I right, not gone for it at all. Callum Bewley thinking, we have got this. I don't Got want to it. hit the front Come too on, soon. Right. You've seen what he does at Doncaster. What on earth would he do at Cheltenham? Over whoa, the third last, whoa. and Santini still comes up best. But has he got the yeah, legs right. of the younger I right? Yeah, right. Shut up. Why are they still giving Chantry House a chance? He can't, can he? So you know yeah, 10 to 1 Santini. Santini. 10 to 1 Santini. Come that's on, that's right. probably the price coming right, in. Right. Right. I right goes for it. Chantry now Chantry House comes back a little bit. Right He's obviously taking Chantry. the mickey. No, this is no. remarkable. Go I don't know. Way. I'm not sure. Come on, Does he right. want it? Come on, coming right. to two out then. Come on, I right's got his. Come on, Batsy. This is what. We want a Carruthers stride here, Batch. Santini not done with on the inside. Chantry House ranges outside. Will he want it? Chantry House is coming. Santini switch. Surely booked for third. Now Chantry House takes it up. He goes low. I right has backed out. My goodness gracious me. The exchange players, they knew, didn't they? This is the workman. Hang on a minute. Here comes the boat. This isn't going to be my boy. Look at the boat. Can't do him, can he? Chantry House goes very, very low. It is a case of job done for the fans. say very low. Any day. Got him home and host there. You could have made a better race of it than that. Well, I, yeah, don't know. On, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He was. He was always. I mean, this is one on with two hundred and fifty yards to race. He was only. He was trading at one point. One point one six. I don't know. He's made hard work of that, but his class has got him through. And he's jumped like a piano. He jumped absolutely <laughs> dreadful. But it, it's a bad race, and his class has got him home. There's no way they can. Uh, they can do anything with him off the back of that, other than put him out to maybe twenty to one from sixteen. It's I think Sam could be right. <laughs> Let's get some social reaction to that, guys, in the gallery. Let's see what everyone out there is saying. Right, what it, look, it was, I mean, the reason why I'm, you know, it, I, I right ran to his mark there, didn't he, pretty much, yeah. I would imagine. He's he's done everything. He just hasn't quite seen it out. Classy handicapper. Oh, we know that. Oh, well done. Uh, Nico gets off Sean yeah. Trial, so he's obviously had a hard race as well. Be very interesting to see what our Roving reporter, James Stevens, makes of that in around about oh. 20 minutes' time. Our traders. 14 from 16 for the Gold Cup. That's a bit thinly veiled, that Barry, isn't it? That's almost like a sort of like, I suppose we have to cut him, don't we? It's a token, yeah. token gesture, yeah. but... Yeah, I don't know. That's I don't know. What do you reckon out there then? We haven't seen a Gold Cup winner, have we, guys? I don't think so. No. Uh, he, was, he was fiddling him all throughout, wasn't he? He kept him wide. I thought he was beat turning in. Fair play to you, exchange players. That's why you do it, and I don't. They never got him too much bigger than two to one. I couldn't believe it because I right was cruising, and even the boat was still chugging along. Yeah, I think that they went quite hard because they they walked up the hill, didn't they? Absolutely yeah. walked up the hill. Santini, I think Nick Scarfield maybe thought he had to make it a real test of stamina to bring his stamina, and he and he ran a cracker, didn't he, Santini? He ran really, really well. I don't think we've seen a Gold Cup winner, though, Dave. No, 14-1 to 1 looks probably one of the worst prices out there for the Gold Cup, you would imagine. But, he, look, he's back up and running. Nicky will be happy with yeah. it because they've still got a horse, haven't they, and all that sort of stuff, and he has provided. Because he want to put cheap pieces on him, Batch, can't he? Definitely a bit thinker. Yeah, definitely needed. I mean, all the way around, he just he never looked happy. He was he was leaving his back end in a couple, and, yeah, it's... What's happened to him, then? Because he didn't do this know. last no. year. No. Suddenly, just gone a bit funny. He or? did. It, do, do you, you know? know what, did did he have an injury at one point? He had a hold up, didn't he? He went to Weatherby, 
quietly won a race, didn't he? And uh, and again, didn't really convince there. And he came to mm. Cheltenham and not really anyone really... Do you know what? It's, it's interesting that you saw Nico jump off him quick there, that. And the way he's jumped, it, I wouldn't be surprised if someone comes out with the old injury or a new injury. And he did dismount him after Very last. So quickly, let's hope yeah. he is all right. Of course, physically. Great to see. So that, now, this is what we love about jump racing more than anything else. These characters coming back. And this is why, whether you bet them or not, you just love them, don't you? And it's great to see they've got a tune back out of Santini. I wonder what sort of... Would you go bet 365 Gold Cup? Oh, yeah, I thought like it was brilliant. I thought Brett Santini was brilliant. Uh, He's won around Sandown, of course. He travelled a lot better than he has done. He looks like he races. wants a proper trip now. He jumped beautifully. I think the small field helps him. Mm. Uh, that would worry me about a big handicap. I mm. think, because couldn't you just get in, in trouble and out at the back and then not being able to make up Is there field? a long-distance race at Perth or something like that where you might get a smaller field or something like that, you know, later on in the season, maybe? Yeah, yeah like, like you pick up one of those... That's a great shout about fields, the small field, though. Won't it? You'll pick up one of those weak, grade two, three small field races. Let's have a quick mention about simply the bets, because, Barry, that was too bad to be mm. true, that one, eh? Uh, trip, Dave. Trip. You'll see him. I don't think you'll ever see him step up to that trip again. They, it was a fact finding mission for them. He's obviously didn't get home. He struggled in early parts of the race as well to keep up, to keep uh, in tabs with them. But I think most definitely his future lies over two and a half miles. It's taken a, a little mm. while for a few of those horses that Nichols has got in those colours. He got them off of Whittington, didn't he? He's taken. Yeah. He hasn't really had much success with them yet. And this is something that you've seen with Nichols in the past. Sometimes it does take them a little bit of a time to get into that Nichols routine, doesn't it? Yeah, looks that way, doesn't it? Very much so. But a lot of people at the start of the day said he can't be back in Paul's horses. And, you yeah, know, they all have disappointed a little bit. He was, I don't know, beaten going out in the final circuit. It me? was interesting. He got Rouge Vif, I think, in the same colours. Yeah. And uh, Nichols in his stable toil pinpointed the celebration chase at Sandown as that was his big target for the whole season, right at the end of the season. And which so you, you might have known. I thought, in the back of my mind, I thought, mm. well, maybe he feels that that was just going to need a bit of time. Yeah, when perhaps the top notchers have done their running or something mm. like that. Yeah, again. But I've, genius, I've still got Nichols. that in my mind, that, you know, thinking two or three months ahead, if Rude Viff turns up for that celebration chase, you know Nichols will have him absolutely bang on. Well, that was the Cotswold chase, guys, and that was the gold cut market. A lot of you not happy about the clipping in and all that sort of stuff. And the sort of Barry's reaction has sort of summed it up for you. But will we see a spring up for the Albert Bartlett market? Of course, the three-mile novice hurdle on the Friday of the uh, Cheltenham Festival. Because we have a trial coming up here, it is the River Don, Barry. Where are you playing? Yeah, my Bobby Dazzler's been the springer in this market, Dave. Has been back at 6.0 on the exchange, which is 5 to 1, into 3.55 now, which is 5 to 2. So he's halved in price. I like unanswered prayer for Josh Moore in it. Uh, I thought last time out when Canton over two miles six. He traded 160 in running on the Beffer exchange and still got up the win. He beat uh, Fleming's side that day by two and a quarter lengths, one of Paul Nichols. I thought that was a really dour staying. Uh, performance. He's stepping up in trip again here. He's stepping up an additional two furlongs to the three miles here. The time before that, he was beaten by subsequent grade one winner stage star, another Paul Nichols horse uh, in Newbury over two and a half miles. So he's a horse definitely going in the right direction. I like his price as well. He's currently 4.9. He's five now. He's on the slide. He had been 4.4. So uh, he is on the slide. What we're going to do, we're going to ride that slide wave, please, G-Rod. We're going to look the back and we look the back of a 5.4. Um, so we're going to be a price maker here. It'll go over into the pink box and it'll be uh, it'll go into the late column. We're looking to have 50 quid on him at 5.4. Uh, we can reassess that before the off time, which is 4.45 in three minutes. Thank you, Barry, then. All right, unanswered prayers. For trainer Chris Gordon, whose horses have come back in from the cold, shall we say. A couple of winners this week, winning really well at also. A mixed bag as usual in this sort of race, G, isn't it? I'll come to you first. Yeah. Uh, ben... Pauling said in the week, I know what you need to win this race. He's won with four runners out of his um, past decade runners. He's won this three times. Barters Hill, remember him, 2016. Uh, Nade, Nadetak, is that how I pronounce that? Caught, caught, caught me running. Ex flat runner actually managed to win this in 2019. And the Cobb last year. All of horses who had pretty much run in handicap company, very experienced otherwise. Where are you playing? Are you sticking with the Paulie? Yeah, uh, yeah. this is one of my better bets of the day here, Dave. I've got two strong bets today, and this is one of them. It's called Not At Present, yeah, for Ben Pauling. Um, I think that this has got the best form in the race, and I think that it's last time at Fontwell. It was only a handicap hurdle, 
but the um, the time was good. They finished the race very strongly. The second, Khan, I backed and tipped next time out and won very well. At Had Ludlow. to get that in, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, I don't sell myself down. You never do. And uh, the fourth, um, certainly Red, came out and ran very well next time as well, finishing second um, in another in another decent race, I think it was a handicap. Uh, he ran to a, an RPR that was five or six pound higher than he'd run at, at Fontwell, so he'd improved since. Khan ran well since, and um, he's just a weird horse, this, uh, not at present, because he's uh, a typical three-mile hurdler, and he, he doesn't really go a yard. He's on and off the bridle. Uh, he looked. He traded a, a 1,000 to one in running uh, on Betfair when he won that day at Fontwell, 999 to one, and then came through and won. So they slapped blinkers on this time. I think he had cheek pieces on there. He's obviously a bit of a thinker. But three miles around Doncaster, real long straight, I think that might suit horse like him who gallops on really strong. Quite strong on him, at a good price, not at present. You obviously are, because you're waxing lyrical there. I thought I'd go and have a cup of tea and visit the gents and all that sort of thing. I could have gone, gone to the oh, box I, at Huntington. It didn't even cross my, <laughs> didn't even cross my mind that then Ben Paulin had won this race a few times. Either. Well, they, that's why I'm I sort uh, yeah. of, this is why I'm here, this is why I'm here. Batch, what do you like in this? I like Bridge North Henry. Uh, Daily, you'll bounce off the ground. Yeah, we'll do. I like my Bobby Dazzler. I thought Gone for a, the steamer. Yeah, good run in the handicap at Cheltenham behind Dolphin Square. Kansas City Chief, Botox has all really consistent They're horses. a good operation, Mel Rowley and Alex Edwards, yes. aren't they? Better known for the point to points, but because of the COVID situation, they brought their horses under rules, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they've done, they've really done all well. right, yeah. So, yeah, I'll give this horse a you, massive chance. You'd be a little bit worried, like, if that one, it's definitely not going to win at an Albert Bartley, is it? I mean, well, my, my one's not going to win It ran particularly either. well at Cheltenham last time, behind Dolphin Square, of course, was one of the highlights so far as well. It was certainly Dave the Maxwell. Year. Uh, that's where, uh, do you remember the Max? Go on the Max. The Max we loved that, yeah. didn't we, for Barry, of course. Uh, and he's since come out and uh, t- t- uh, Dave Great to see Josh Moore back as well, Dave. He was back yesterday. David yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slowly build back up, but he's one of the good guys. Isn't yes, he? very good yeah, guy. Very, yeah. very it's unbelievable good that he got back like that so um, quickly yeah, after yeah. what happened with him before Christmas that time. But great to see. They're men of iron, really, aren't they? But yeah. do you know what, yeah. Barry? Yeah. Except for me, uh, <laughs> soft as yet. There's a reason why he's only riding in the bumper tomorrow, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> no obstacles at my age now. But no, it, I mean, it's credit to like Oaksy House, O'Sullivan House, and all that. It, it, it helps you get back a lot quicker. All right, we're off and running then in the river, in the river Don. Uh, lovely digressing here, but uh, the steamer has gone right to the front. Then my Bobby Dazzler, horse that certainly does stay well, he's going to need to. He's taking a bit of a tug. He's not sure we totally want to see that, but yeah. let's get them in market order. And then we'll go down and have a little look. Where's unanswered prayers? The drifter in the market nearer the off. He's just taking a nice tug. Orange mid div, mid div as you would call it. We can get you doing comments and running yet, Barry. Uh, where is where is uh, Colbane Boy who's a very interesting horse, loads of experience. Out Been the around back. the houses, ex Irish. He's out the back. Unanswered. Bridge North. And Bridge North, uh, of course, takes the place of Hillcrest. We've got Hillcrest coming up in around about an hour's time. The biggest horse in training, we think. Couldn't measure him, said Henry Daly. He's expected to take that out at 340. Uh, the Ballymore trial, but he, here we have Bridge North, and I think he's overpriced. Uh, the real whacker. Great name, that. Uh, Harry Skelton riding him. He's taken an enthusiastic tug out the back as well. And the one that I missed, Marla Mission for John McConnell in those Anna Bonita colours sitting in third as well. Gee, early impressions. You don't look to be going very fast. That's a six, nearly 16 second furlong, so that's outside of Ruby's range of going too fast. 28 miles an hour, G-Run. That would yeah. be, I think at most of 28 miles an hour. So yeah. that's quite slow, isn't it? Yeah, that is definitely. Yeah. Yes, it is slow, absolutely. Uh, right. So, yeah, I, I don't think they're going that fast. But uh, he's getting an easy on the fav, isn't he? And now he's just ramped lead. it up a little bit as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with my position in third there, not at present. At least he's not come off the bridle yet. By now, at Font- well, he was hard under the bump, I think. Was he? So the headgear might actually work. This well, is the, this either is that or they're going final, slower. Yeah, all right, OK. They are definitely going a bit slow. I'm not sure about the ground up there at Donny either. Very difficult position for Roderick Duncan to be in, isn't it? Because this time of year... Watering it, well, <laughs> you know, it's, what's going on? Yeah, Doncaster know? as well. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's not a yeah, great yeah. job to And they have had some big fields yeah. up there, and you know, um, we've seen some decent results. So we are what half an hour away from the Sky Bet chase. We go back for the Cleve Hurdle. We've got Champ coming up. We've got Paisley Park. They're all out to play, aren't they? Look fabulous. What's he going to do? My lord, I bet he's drifted when we come to the exchange market after the way the Nichols horses have been running so far. But here we are. This will be the last next time around. My Bobby Dazzler, the steamer in the race. Nicely going along in front. Now, this Marla horse, John McConnell's horse, uh, Marla Mission, he he liked to get on with it last time at Musselburgh. Are they doing too much, G? 
Doesn't look like it, does it? But they have quickened it up almost a second faster there in the furlong, so they have quickened up. And uh, he's going on, isn't he, now, mile a mission, the, the Irish horse, by the looks of it. Yes. We don't sit as much over hurdles, do we? We do over, uh, over fences with these front runners dominating. Well, they are quicking it right up now, look. Yeah, and Alex Edwards, who, like I say, he's a, he's a, he's a properly experienced point-to-point -point rider, Alex Elliott. He's got loads of experience under rules as well, and he's getting it's on one of them it. going wide there. It looks like the real whacker the is real doing whacker. what we saw hey, is in the that Harry? The real whacker Harry is going wide up for the better ground, of course. Bridge North stood out the back, along with Coolbane Boy, and uh, looking for not uh, yeah, not at present. He's he's a big price, Barry, isn't he? Geez, I hope at the moment. Uh, another present is currently trading at 15.5. Mm. Uh, that was practically his bet for SP, 15.1. 3.2 2 Bobby Dazzer with a bet for SP at 2.92. There hasn't been a massive change because... No real moves has been made yet. They've got a steady pace. 6.2 unanswered prayer. Your favourite still, my Bobby Dazzer at 3.2, which is 9 to 4. Definitely if cranking I, it up now. If I was getting involved now, I'd be looking at my hope, Bridge North. But I, d I just wonder whether unanswered prayers has done a bit too much. But I like the fact that he's banged there, Batch. Yes, he's banged. Yeah, they're all, there's a few travelling well, Dave. Bit, and got a bit argy mm, yeah, yeah, argy <laughs> Who's on him? Joshua Moore, Josh. of course. Yeah, <laughs> This would be a great... Great moment for Josh, of course, wouldn't it? Come uh, back when I, Is yeah. anything in trouble? Nothing yet. Shows you Not how yet. hard they've gone, yeah. This is usually a proper slog, isn't it? Don't usually run it on this sort of ground. Yeah, no, they, they have quickened it up quite a bit, Dave. They're, they're on 13 second yeah. furlongs now, so they're going faster than Ruby would expect. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it was fun Mine's enough. coming off the bit now, which is we've what not, I expected. We've not had any Al Albert Bartlett winners come from this no, race. No, there won't the be an Albert years. Bartlett winner in this race. Bartlett's hill was about as close as it got, wasn't it? Was he fourth in the Albert Bartlett? Fourth, so, I think, yeah. Like that, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, the great British hope, of course. Uh, I'll tell you what, the real whacker's catching my eye now. It just depends whether he's just run a the bit too easy or not. Oh, really great name, whacker. isn't it? Mm. Uh, so my Bobby Dazzler then. We are. We, it's always so hard to know when you're when you're trying to read a race at Donny where the home straight is, and yeah. yet you've still got ten miles to go when go you turn around the bend. Yeah, <laughs> the bend's never ended. Was it like that yeah. when you got there? You've been like, oh, come on, Governor, yeah. give us a chance. It's a long, long turn, isn't now, it? Now finally, long, yeah. when they're racing in earnest, you're not a present. He's no, showing he's why he's got headgear. Yeah. This is why he. But traded don't worry, you're saying. Ninety-nine to one last time. He's don't always, worry. No, I wouldn't be putting you off taking a big price. They've about just him. been caught out of their ground a little bit because the sprint for home. He's on. And the real whacker the catching real you right all the well. time. He must be a bit of a steamer. Yes, he is. Look at that. He's gone fast, Barry, with three to jump. The real whacker's your favourite at six at 2.62, 13 to 8. It's six, my Bobby Dazzard. Now, Maller Mission, though, in front. Yeah, John Maller Mission's going well. Like six to four favourite. Six to four, your pick now. I'll tell you what. The real whacker and Maller Mission. There are some horses that have fallen in an absolute hole. Bridge North yeah. is going to be pulled oh, up. Oh, Bobby's going back. Pulled by Boy. Right, back. the steamer. This is Marlon. This I'll tell you what, this is Harry Skelton's, this, isn't it? Looks Look good, at this. We've Harry got one here, haven't we? Yeah. The whacker's about to deliver. The sucker punch, isn't he? There's some tired horses no, in this he's race. Not going through it. Wow. Oh, no, he's not. He's kidding him into it. He's hanging all over the place. Is that green this time? I still think he gets him up. I'll get what? to the one yeah. in front. Oh, I think, yeah. You okay, look at these two. We got, this is often we see this. Okay, so Marla's promise. He's gone really close. Uh, this is, I'll tell you what, it's quite impressive performance, this, because he was up there throughout. Good My Bobby Dazzle yeah. has absolutely fallen out. Oh, well, uh, Hang on, is he, he going to rally? There's a bit of argy-bargy going up on the run. In two going miles clear of My Bobby Dazzle. Is this going to get up? No, this is a very nah, brave performance, far. this. And Look the Marlers promise, yeah. James Bowen at his very best, got the stands rail. Real promise from the real whacker in the Marlon Mission. I keep saying Marlon's promise, and I? I did that on a feature show yesterday. Marlon Mission, first time tongue tied. John McConnell, no good with Anna Bonina in the previous race. Hit the target there. Hmm. He will run in the Albert Bartlett, I would wager, Barry. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's an interesting proposition because he wouldn't be anywhere near the top of the um, staying echelons in Ireland, but he's 33 to 1 from 66 for the Albert Bartlett. Probably a fair reflection of his ability. The real whacker trade at a low of 1.5, one jump in the second last, two to one on for 267 quid. My Bobby Dazzler in running trade at a low of 2.72. They're the only real in running uh, stories because the first and second pull well clear, but 33 from 66 for the Albert Bartlett for the winner. That's bigger than I was expecting. To be honest, they've come well clear of a horse who had some very good handicap form at Cheltenham. I think my Bobby Dazzler, he's running on again at the end. He's probably run near enough to his mark. Hmm, very lightly race this chap, and I quite like that performance. I can see him definitely having a say up the home straight 
in the Albert Barlet. As, of all the wacky prizes that you're going to get at the festival, that's not uh, a bad one, I don't think. No, I don't think so. No, I agree with G, I think. I'm not suggesting he's going to win. I'm just suggesting oh, you just said you think he got a shout in the straight. I said he will be, he will be there, I think. No, I don't think he will. He I think beat he a horse that didn't even want to win there, did he? No. no. Uh, he was, that horse in second. That's a third run for the real wacker. You just like the name. It was hanging across. Well, I couldn't even mention it. What, it the didn't real want wacker? To win. It didn't want to yeah, go I do like it. the name of the real wacker. I couldn't even get the uh, uh, the winner's name. So disappointments there, weren't there? Bridge North went up there for the quick ground. Mm, not quick ground up there at all, is it? So lots will be said about that in the week, no doubt. There's your bet for ASP. Then let's move on, shall we? Because we've got a Cleve to talk about. It's the smallest field in the Cleve hurdle, the 2:30 at Cheltenham since 1998. But Barry Orr, we've got a winner of the previous two renewals in Paisley Park. We've got McFabulous, one of the most talented horses in Nichols Yard, and we've got the current favourite for the Stayers. Yeah, champ, your current favourite for the Stayers, like you say, he's 11-4 to favourite. That's obviously with Classical Green running an absolute stink in the Galmoy on Thursday in Garrett Park. Um, champ, 1.58 to win this, so 100 wins you 58. McFabulous, 5.6. Uh, Paisley Park, 7. 24, Liz Nagar, Oscar, and 100, the rag, Danny Mag. Um what I liked in the race, I couldn't see the favourite getting beaten, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I thought he won well last day. They're keeping him over hurls. He's already a grade one winner over hurls as a novice in Aintree. But I do like in the without market, I'm going to go with McFabulous. Now, McFabulous was probably only going to be third in the uh, last day in Cheltenham, only for brewing up a storm falling. But I thought after he jumped the last, he stayed on really well up the hill. Um, and this will... Let them know whether they should be going for the stairs or he's virtually certain to go for the stairs or let's say off the back of today. So he's currently 2.24. We're going to have 50 quid win on him in the without market. So it's two chances of winning. We can win the race or if the favourite wins and we come second to him, we still get paid. I think Paisley Park is regressive. I think Liz Nagar Oscar is regressive. And I don't fancy Danny Mag at all. So it leaves me with McFabulous at 5 to 4, I think is a decent bet here in the without market. I'm going to echo all of that as well. And uh, yeah, I've had a little bit on him when he started drifting in the market. I just think Champ at two's on is too skinny for me, certainly in January. It's been an expensive month with two kids after Christmas, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, but I, I just am, I, like, we've all had moments, haven't we, with the nickel horses, whether you're on Miranda, whether you're on simply the bets. It was also called Solo, of course, it didn't turn up in the in the handicap chase we had earlier on. It was won by Imperial Alcazar. 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 That went well, didn't it? Uh, um, so, I don't know, I'm being swayed by the stable form factor, which you would tell me is absolute rubbish. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's had a lot of reverses, but they're still running all right, aren't they? Miranda ran okay. Yeah. All right, there's been some terrible ones, but uh, I... Simply uh, the bets didn't run all right. No. Miranda, I, you could argue... Uh, I wouldn't say he didn't run all right, oh, simply the bets. Like, the trip was bang against him. You'll never see him over that trip again. You can tell I, he's I got to talk to Nichols on Monday morning, can't you? <laughs> 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 you can well, listen, He's fairness, been in the game a long time as our Barry. In fairness to Nichols, he did say on Monday when we did that Natter with Nichols piece with him that the horses still were, weren't where he wanted them, mm. quote-unquote. You know, mm. he wanted another week to 10 days with them. And, and he said that, as ever, he's been... Uh, publicly very open about that. If I was going to be positive, it, this is almost a different case, McFabulous, isn't it? Because he had the hold up. They were considering going over fences with him and it was an eye-catching finish last time. Yeah, Whether yeah, that form yeah. is good enough to beat Champ, the handicapper would say Champ has now got £10. But, uh, I think if you're back in McFabulous, which I have, and um, just, I think Champ will probably win, but he is 10 years old, isn't he? And and he's not, he's not, Aggressive, is he? He's a very, very good horse. But you're looking at taking a 1.57, much bigger price than McFabulous. You're going back to thinking, well, McFabulous always looked like a promising horse. He'd always be better over three miles. He always looked like the sort of horse who would improve with age. It just hasn't happened for him yet. But is it going to happen today? It could do. Mm, yeah, well, look, it, it, again, yeah, again, if any horse is going to like the small tactical, you know, Come field, on, yeah, then... Give us a word on Liz Nagar Oscar, because you love him, don't you? Well, I do like Liz Nagar Oscar. Um, I backed him in the Albert Bartlett when he um, he ran fifth, I think. Aloha was in that race. It was very good Albert Bartlett. I can't remember what won it that year. Uh, and I had a little bit on him when he won the Stayers. And I liked him. Uh, he, I just like. I just don't think the ground will be in his favour. But I am seeing a bit of love for Lisa Garros, who, of course, is a Stayers winner. We should say in the without market as well. Um, hmm. If you were having a bet in the without market, Matty Batch. Without market, it'd definitely be McFabulous. But for me, yeah, champs. Just it's, mm. there's you can't. You go through all of their form, as you say, Paisley Park, Listener Gar. They seem to be 
I don't like to say it. They seem to be a little bit on the decline. Champ is 10, but he still looks better than McFabulous to me. Excuse so. me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at the Stayers Hurdle now. Did 10-year-olds win the Stayers Hurdle? Solwit one might have won it at that age, did he? Maybe. That was a brave off the top of your head, show. Yeah, that was it? really off the top uh, of my head. Let's have a look. Past winners. Bucks, how old was he? No, he? they got a terrible record. Yeah, I seem they? to remember this, yeah. Yeah. I think this, I mean, you, well, your... I think I did it last year, didn't I, now you mention it. I think I did this for the preview in Probably. last year's paper. Probably. I just, well, 10-year-olds in general Six have got a bad record at the Champion Festival. Six dominate the race. Yeah, uh, um, they do. Uh, Shall we go through reasons. it? Nichols Canyon, 2017. Penhill, 18. Paisley Park, of course, 2019. List Nagar Oscar, 2020. Both running in this race. Uh, seven-year-olds. And Flooring Porter last year, your big shout at the festival. In you six. have to go back to 86 for the last time a horse aged double figures won the race. <laughs> Are we looking at a false favourite then here? I mean, it is a surprise that he is... Cast your minds back to October, that he is now the Antipo's favourite. I mean, if you're on Flooring Porter again, you're happy, aren't you? Uh, well, yeah. I think you are. Classical Dream flopped in the week. Yeah, uh, yeah. Classical Dream flopped in the week as well, didn't he? Well, it's a terrible one, yeah, wasn't it? Ter- yeah, yeah. Very strange placing that. Easy to say in hindsight, but the Galmoy can be a bit I of mean, a... I mean, I love Flooring Porter, but Flooring Porter's not an outstanding stayer, is he? It's not an outstanding year, though, G, again, is it? You, where's the... Champ where's the... could be. Well, I know he's 10, but he could be. He's you think a... he's one of the better favourites of the week, he... then, at the, at the moment? I think he's the most likely winner of the Stayers, for sure. Stayers heard I mean, I, I think he'll probably win here. but These trends do get broken, price, of course. But yeah. it's pri- you know, do you want to back a horse who's 10 at 1.59, who's only ran once over hurdles in the last It's a bit underwhelming, is it? Could walk a harder step up, potentially. But, uh, yeah, we all, know, ground, we all know that he likely will win the race, but yeah. it's price, isn't it? When you, like, it's like I always say, like tipping and punting and actually writing and chatting about horses is different. Like... Uh, you know, I, I accept that. I've, I think Champ's the best stayer around in Britain and Ireland, but that doesn't mean I'm going to back him at 1.59 for this race because mm. price comes into it, doesn't it? Time Hill, of course, will be watching on in the wings, won't he? Yeah, see, well, uh, he's, you know. he's all right, but he's not. He's, he, not good, he's is just he? all right, isn't he? I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, a bit, a bit, bit, I'm a not bit sure about horses rate 160. On. What about Paisley Park here? Could they could they try and, try and reinvent it by cracking on a little bit and just getting on with it? Because the pace doesn't look. Easy to map here, does it, whatsoever? They've got nothing to lose by trying that. You Dandy mean. Mag, the right outside under Paddy, might try and steal it. I don't know, maybe Listen to Gar might come on, but he's he's just got one one day in mind and they'll be hoping for rain in March, basically. But um, yeah. Paisley Park, I don't know, the gloss has come off, hasn't it? Paisley Park's a great horse. For your mate, Andrew Gemmell. Yeah, he's a great horse. You know, He's been a great horse. He still is a great horse, Paisley, and... Um, He's just old, isn't he? And he's had his day, and he's on his way down, but he's still quite good. It's interesting as well. They they always said they've come out and said, "Oh, we we scored him over fences. He jumps well." But it's I too find late that to a bit go. hard. It's yeah, too late to I find go, it a bit hard it? to believe because you would have done it a long. You time. must remember that he's had art problems as well. Yeah, hasn't I he? don't think he's. he's yeah. it, it was a very good comeback, of course, in the long walk last year at Ascot, wasn't it? One of the finishes of the season when he came from nowhere. Yeah, I mean, he's roughly turbo he's in. roughly about ten or twelve pound below the horse that he was at his absolute best. But that still makes him a very good staying hurdler. On paper, him. McFabulous just loves this tactical scenario, doesn't he? He, he can yeah. be a bit keen. But I think watch him down at the start. Him as well, I think. I, I, like I say, he's my hope here. I just couldn't be with Champ at that price. But the Stayers hurdle could well be thrown up into the air if Champ does not deliver here. The market is expecting a JP McManus, Nicky Henderson high profile. That's another Saturday one that double. we win, isn't it? That's another one that the British win. Uh, the Stayers hurdle, surely. We well, we'd have a one. much better record overall. Than surely the Irish, we win that um, one this year. You could see Paisley still getting placed in the Stayers. Yeah. Because as. It's not, as you say, it's not a great I mean, stairs, is it? It's classical dreams are funny horse, and yeah. Florian Port is very good, but he's not outstanding. That is our race, that is our championship race. They'll be kicking it? themselves for running classical dream, won't they, in the Galmoy? Like I said earlier, the Galmoy is a, traditionally I a mean, slot. how do you bet on the four championship races at the festival? How do you bet on England versus Ireland? I, I'll take England to, to, to win more. Mm. You take England to win the four yeah. championship races? To win more championship races than Ireland. That's a shout, Baz. Shishkin. Come on, I'll have an even hundred of you. There you go. <laughs> All right, you heard that here. Champ. That's two for you us. You heard that here. It'll be coming out of the Betfair pot, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be for the injured jockeys front. There you go. There yeah. we go. Oh, there we go. this is something we could get going this year, isn't it? Okay. All right. All right. Okay, the four championship races. You heard it here on the uh, last weekend in January 2022. England for Shishkin. Ireland, Ireland win the champion hurdle. They win the Gold Cup. They have mm. a very good chance of winning the of winning the, um, the Queen Mother. 
Look at G-Rod's face. Look, he's sensing it all of a sudden. Yeah, well, look, and I think they'll, I think they'll win the stairs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't write off Pascal Dream just yet. No, Florian Porter there. I'll have an even hundred Ireland off you. Go on, <laughs> there you go. The Happy days for the injured jockeys. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, I love it. Money where mouths are on this show. Oh, we're just getting the spikes up, won't it? The social team Ben Blackmore will be getting that one out but that's what this again to remind you this is all for charity the profits on the show Barry is having a sterling start to the year again courtesy of some outrageously tipped winners as well along the way it's all about showcasing the functionality of the exchange and the sports book for you and you know if you're not sure about it on these tricky days let us do the hard work for you let's hope you're enjoying it along the way myself Dave Alton Matty Batch back in the middle chair G-Rod the Big Bear and Barry Orr as well. We're coming up towards the business end of the show, but we'll be here until about four o'clock. Worry not. No prem football today. A lot of money for your one here, Dave. A lot of money for listener Gar Oscar here. Is there really? Yeah. What's his record like on good ground? Is it good ground? I mean, you can't really call it proper good ground. Do you think maybe they're going to jump off in front? Well, this is the thing. We previewed the race yesterday. We're all going, who's going to lead? It won't be McFabulous. I think we can absolutely <coughs> swear by that, can't we? It won't be McFabulous. I don't think it'll be Champ. Hmm. So right. that's going to leave you Paisley, the outsider go. Bear with me while I look at Listener Gar's record. You'd think the outsider ground. would just be going around for a bit of money, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, well will, he, yeah, of... will he be quick enough to lead him? Yeah. Listener Gar Oscar has won on good ground. He's only had two runs on it. One oh. was a win. One <coughs> was a seventh as well. Couldn't tell you what company that was in, so but we know he had a soft ground very soft well. Ground right, well, whatever well, happens, the enough. talking is nearly done. And McFabulous being kept away from the others down at the start. He has fizzed a bit down at the start before, hasn't he? But was it this weekend? It was this time of year that he won at Kempton, wasn't it, last year? And he, he sort of came good there. And they tried to make him into a stay as well. They, they obviously opted against it. And they went to Aintree, of course. And he got outdone for speed by Abacadabras. But everything got outspeeded by the Irish around about that time last year. He was eye-catching. Let's see if he can back it up and Nichols can get. I'm not going to sell off the cold list. That would be awful. But, um, he's, he's a huge he price, McFabulous, huge price. He's at seven on, on the exchange now. That is surprising. And again, people huge. latching on to the day's trend. All right, good luck wherever you go. Looks like Dandy Mag, the outsider, second run for Fergal O'Brien. They are going to at least put a little bit of pace yeah, into see, the race. Look, they're going to make the running on your the one. The one thing yeah. that we're certain about oh. is the now 10-year-old. Oh, no, oh, Pacey no. Park's oh, no. Sorry, he's missed Pacey the Park's been left behind. What happened there? Why didn't the flag oh. go up? He's been doing that lately. Oh. Been luck, Surely the flag should have gone up and given know. him a chance yeah. there. Come on it's the a start, two-time winner of this race starter. What are you doing? No. Barry, what's happened to the exchange? He's nearly a hurdle behind. Uh, it was a Paisley Park. Yeah. yeah. Exchange. The exchange hasn't really reacted to it other than <laughs> Paisley Park is 11.5 from 7. You might want to put another zero on that, and you know what happens when I say that. So, okay, all right. He's 12. He's 12. From seven. Like, it must have been that much ground that he's lost. He, it? What was it about? It was, it was at least it was. 10 lengths on yeah, it. Yeah, at least. Yeah, it was at least 10 well. lengths on it. If you were on this now, Paisley Park. Exchange is not overreacting. It's That's the thing. That's Two remarkable. to five champ. It's more the case where a champ has come in considerably off the back of, you know, that's 14% of the book, I think, around uh, Paisley Park was. Yeah, well, but two to five, Champ now. Yeah, Champ has definitely hardened up because one of his rivals has just given him 10 lengths. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? OK, we are off and running 29 miles an hour. They're doing the average <laughs> once again. And listen to Gar Oscar. It is who leads. Good to see him out in front enjoying himself. Uh, Dandy Mag, the rank outsider. Why? Because he's rated 143. Second run, though, for Fergal O'Brien. They'll be hopeful of having a say in the finish, no doubt. Have they got the 100th winner yet? That's the question. Fergal O'Brien. They were on 99 yes, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. They, it was Imperial, wasn't it? Imperial what a way yeah. to do it, Fergal, at Cheltenham as well. Congratulations yeah. to all the team there as well. You know, one of the greatest Twitter accounts out there, isn't it? Fergal O'Brien and McPherson Racing. We absolutely love to watch that from afar. Congratulations to all the team there. Uh, could they just pull off an absolute mighty shock here and get the double? All right, let's have a look then. Now, this, this could be a lot more tactical than it is. Thank goodness, listener Gar and Adam Wedge has gone on. Yeah, not messing around, is he? In front, listen, Nagaros going at a good pace. Yeah. Um, do you think he's good? Do, do you think they've potentially got it in their mind, not just to make him, you know, reinvigorated a bit, but they might be trying to expose the stamina of Champ and McFabulous a bit? I think maybe McFabulous. They're thinking we can pick up for second for sure. Do you, do you think Champ has stamina issues, Dave? Do you not remember the RSA where he outstayed a Gold Cup winner in I, the shadows of the post? I think he outstayed they, Manila Indo. I still can't believe he won that RSA. And I'm I don't, sh- don't. don't it, it daggers to my heart every time I look at that race. I was we, all over Manila. Him, he, he did outstay her that day. He did outstay Rachel yeah, that day. So, I, I, you know, I don't think it stains an issue for the horse. He I, traded massive as well in running. It was exactly that. I don't think he yeah. got racing until they started 
burning each other out a la Ho and Manelo Inda there. No, listen, he, he, look, look, he's a long walk, one of, but we're talking about against other stayers. And very, very strong stayer is this Nagar Oscar. So, of course, is Paisley Park. And Paisley's at least caught up a little bit, Barry, hasn't he? He's, and again, the market's not worried. Now, Paisley Park into 9.4 now. It's 4 to 9, champ. 1.46. 6 McFabulous. He's just hunting along nicely. Got into a nice rhythm. 9, Paisley Park. Liz Nagar Oscar, 13. Uh, just let you know, lads, Paul Nichols has pulled cap course out of the sky bet chase. Mm, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, all right. Horse that has had his issues before. Thanks for that, Barry. Uh, that's that's interesting, isn't it? To say the least. Um, cap course, like uh, the winner of the Peter O'Sullivan, when we co covered that on the old Hennessy Day, uh, out then. And he was one of the fancy ones fabulous. as well. That He's comes up in pushed. 10 minutes. Yeah. McFabulous is just coming off the bridal ear, Dave, which you wouldn't have thought for us with plenty of speed. He jumps really well, McFabulous, yeah, he does. without putting the curse on it. He, he's a, he started terribly. Champ's as looking good, isn't he? He's taking yeah, a long good. champ. Yeah, this is this is this is only one one thing I'm expecting here. But they've certainly given Paisley a chance, haven't they? Good handling here by Aidan Coleman, isn't it? By the way, didn't panic at all. No, I mean the race is three mile, Dave. So you've got half a chance to get back into it. You know, if would you have said something as you went past the starter? He couldn't really blame the starter, really. He's put the flag. He's done it right at the last minute, Paisley. It was. It was just that second two. He, Mm. He couldn't really do a lot you about think it, he's really. becoming a bit of a thinker thinking no yeah. head gear of course this time but he is going for a hat trick in the race Paisley and not out of it at all alright then we're turning on to the far side of the course we're about to start going down the hill G is this just going to be an absolute uh, procession uh, yes looking good for champ isn't it although uh, listen to Garosco obviously pressing on the gas in front trying to run the finish out of him. and this is Adam Wedge who does this so effectively on cool code he stacks them up and then he kicks but he needed a good jump there he got it Champ, okay over it, wasn't he? Dandy Mag maybe just starting to fill the pinch. Now McFabulous is starting to warm up a little bit as well. And Paisley, I mean, who knows? Let's find out. He's he just hit about to hit his yet. flat spot now. Oh, here we go. You've literally oh. called it as he did it. He does this <laughs> this customary flat spot. It doesn't stop him winning races. He's such a great horse, though, isn't and he? And this is his home, coming. as we can see. Presbury, Presbury Hill in the background then. All right, then. It, this is quite tight, Barry. We're coming to the third last. What are we saying? Yeah, he's trees on champ now. Liz Nagar Asker, 8.6. Paisley Park, 10.5. 13. McFabulous, but your favourite trees on. All right, OK. And he's sitting pretty, isn't he? John Joe O'Neill Jr. Good to see him keeping the ride. Rag right. is still with them. Yeah, Dandy Mag. He used to be he used to, also, again, that stays one of Potemps qualified, didn't it? Oh, McFabulous, McFabulous now on the outside. Well, yeah. Look at the Could classy chassis here. of McFabulous. Now, this oh, McFabulous. Is, Paisley Park now has broken a bit, hasn't he, I think? Yeah. He's gone right on the exchange yeah, finally. Paisley's in trouble. Yeah, Paisley is in trouble. Is but McFabulous we know he will be stay? coming He's back. Well. McFabulous has got every single chance. But the old stayers hurdle winner, 2020. Off he goes. This is the goal, Oscar. Cham now comes off the bridle. Surely going to be drifting a little bit. But you wouldn't be on him now, would you? No, yes. Come on, Cham. You think he's fine? This will be remarkable. Champ is in trouble. He's absolutely filling his lungs though. Paisley Park is gonna do this. Remarkable performances if he pulls it out. Champ on the far side. Paisley Park on the near. He's absolutely done it. This is absolutely sensational scene here at the RP Live Studios. Yes. Wow, last to first. You could have put another zero on it. How many times will I say that and they come good? My Lord, three times in a row he has now gone and won this. Barry or make some sense of that. What spike did he hit? You couldn't bet the odds on as soon as the words are out of your mouth. What price is he now for flag ball? Listen, he's only 11.5. Or you can put a zero on the end of that zoo on his own. Oh, I don't bet him running for good reason, Barry. How big did he go, Barry? Absolute magpie you are, without a shadow of a doubt, or you're a magpie. Anyone who's laid him rubbing their hands from flag ball. He's hit a high in running of 48 for 27 quid. That's the highest he's traded at in running, 48 for 27 quid. Your favourite champ turning in was trading at trees on. He got to a low of four to one on 1.25 champ. McFabulous travelled well. His effort just petered out. He hit a low of 4.9. And listen, Gar Oscar, who tried to make all, he hit a low of two to one, 3.0. But amazing race. What a spectacle. What a great result for yeah. for, for fans of, of the uh, of the old um, Stairs Hurdle winner stuff. So, Unbelievable. Great to see. And lovely for the Lavelle team and the Gemmels as well, because it had looked like the gloss had gone off. Now, Alyssa Gar Oscar has run his race in third there. Champ, he has been outstayed, hasn't he? But yeah. He was a little bit laboured, wasn't he there, G? What do you make of it? 
I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> There's a first. <laughs> uh, because Paisley Park has won the race well, but Champ has beaten the rest Look easily. at the start. We're watching yeah, it now. Let's get, a, let, let's get Matty's view on this. Let I don't know. They could have given him another chance there. The, fla the, he's, the flag's gone down, Dave. He's done it right at the last second. He couldn't... Should there not be a touch of discretion there? I mean, we are, thankfully, we're talking about one of the best stairs hurdles hurdlers he's in recent years. He's only lost five or six lengths, Dave. I don't know. Off, I thought off, was... Mac, off McFabulous. Like, McFabulous is fourth at that stage. He's only lost five or six lengths. Is and, it? like, the market didn't panic. Like, you were expecting it to be 25 or 33, but... The market didn't overreact to it. He had a bet for SB 7.1, and he's just he went down to about the 11 mark. Every day's a school day here on Arthur <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm learning something there. So listen, I I wouldn't have been anywhere near him. And if you if that seven not, to one from 20 for the stairs. When we're doing our review, seven to, seven to one. one from 20. And I want to know, Barry, what is happening to that market because with Classical Dream blowing out, Champ blowing out. Could this be one for the well, British really? or four important? We've probably harder. just seen the first two home in the Stairs Erdo, haven't we? Do you think so? Paisley Park and Champ. You wouldn't worry about Champ. Well, Champ's beaten the rest by a long way. He's just way. lost Lo that at Laurie two's on. Porter seven to two favourite. Classical mm. Dream five to one joint second favourite with Pine Hill. Champ six to one. Paisley Park seven to one. Sport and John ten to one. I think Sport and John would nearly be JP's horse there. Yes, because someone put him up, didn't they, Barry? I seem to remember at the start of the season. I have season. a nice voucher on him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing? So I'm glad to see Champ run bad there. Yeah. I can't, I can't deny that. I think those of us that were worried about taking the, the twos on about Champ, I mean, look, he's... Cruise, cruise, cruise all the way, isn't it? And um, yeah. I don't know. I thought he got outstayed personally. But what, the wonderful thing about this race is we jumped two out, and now I'm thinking, right, OK, Paisley, this is what, he, you know. But that was the hat for the flat spot, wasn't it? And when I'm looking at the first two in the running, you you both saw him. He came back on the ball. Yeah. I just don't know what to make of it. That is some game. And he's, he's what, six lengths off I mean, games it, at last? Is that Paisley Park close back to his best? Or has Champ just run miles below form from last time? Well, he's, he's, he's run against a horse that's stable form and stamina, fabulous, who, who looked like he might play a part turning in. Definitely outstayed. Listener Goroska is your benchmark, sure. Yeah, my inclination Steve Mason on be... Monday will be looking at Listener Goroska as he handicaps that uh, race. I, I would be thinking Champ. Where's he got Champ uh, in relation to his run last time? I mean, last time he had Champ at 165. I would yeah. say maybe he's got Champ to 160 here. Even had Champ at 160, he got a Paisley up at 165, which puts him not far off. <sighs> All right, there you go. The smallest field since 1998, but one of the most dramatic dramatic finishes of the Cleve Hurdle. And uh, let us know, could Paisley possibly do it? Horses retaining, I tell you, of course, that, that, would, that would be the story of the festival if Paisley Park comes back to win. I'll tell you what, I've been looking forward to interviewing Emma again. Uh, uh, and she's one of the best to talk to out there, Emma Lavelle. And maybe that's the reason to get her back on. She is, she's going to be over the moon with that. It's great with these horses that have these problems. These old boys coming back. I could see the chat going mental about it. Get your comments in about the stairs and about Paisley Park. Did anyone go when I said put on another zero? Is that what you're all on this show for? Just to wait. I did it with Sporting John as well, of course, famously. Uh, all right, we've got to move on because the Sky Bet is coming up and it's a really, really classy race. As Barry said, Cap Course is out. First of all, Barry, what has that done to the market? Yeah, so just let me catch up with you here, Dave. Uh, the Sky Bet chase, so Cap Course out. Yeah, your market Fusil Raffles is 6.0. Your market leader, 7.2. The Machine, 7 6 the BC, Cap Nord 9 6, 13 Midnight Shadow, Storm Control, another Kerry Lee horse, 13 5. Uh, I like the Machine in it, lads, and that's what I'm going to back win in place, please, G Rod. Um, secondary Masters in Reynolds Town last year, we covered it on the show, Dave. I thought that read yeah. well. Uh, he was off for 280 days before the Labrook Trophy. I put him up in that. Um, his run earlier this month when he unseated Ryder, that, at the first, there's mitigating circumstances for that. So I could put a line through that run. I just still think he's on a workable mark. So 7.2, we're going to have a 25 quid win on him. And we're going to look at the six places as well. Also, there's six places on the Betfair Sportsbook here. But on the exchange in the six place, mar or no, we go the four place market on the exchange. He's currently trading at 2.18. We'll have 25 quid on him at that as well. 
Thank you very much, Barry. All right, and the machine, yeah, didn't he look the real deal last season? And uh, third time lucky this campaign. I like the stable mate, so does Tom Segal as well, who, of course, uh, put uh, Flooring Porter up for the stayers hurdle. He's now found himself in a decent position again, isn't he? Uh, so, so the stable mate for me under Dare McConville, who's really been impressing me, claiming 10. Matty Batch, quickly, we've not got too much time. Uh, I like DBC, but he's coming back after a long runoff. Fusel Raffles got a good chance. Winner of the Charlie Hall, back up to three mile, very interesting. And Midnight Shadow, really good season. And it does like Cheltenham, but three mile as well. We see how he runs over this trip. All right, OK. Uh, th th that one, Mel Rose is all over, and he's been waiting for him to turn up, hasn't he, this season? Uh, DBC. Yeah, that's the one I fancy, DBC. Oh, you've had one of your little conference calls, have you? <laughs> had your goggles on for that. Yeah, Absolutely. I've got my goggles on for that. Uh, I think the Skelton's up there, isn't he, to ride, uh, yeah. to ride this. I, I think this is the one. And um, they are, he's been off for a long time, but Skelton's great at, with them off a break, isn't he? We've seen it loads of times. And it, it's bound to be right fit because it was meant to run in the Roland Merrick over Christmas and yeah. they pulled it out because of self-certificate. So they would have had it right for that Do race. you remember him at Sandown when he when he made that stable debut? At four out, he just thought to yourself, they've got the best handicapped horse in training and he curled yeah. up, didn't he? But Skelton said in his stable tour at the start of the season that he did never have DBC at the uh, where he wanted him last season. Um, so I think yeah. that, uh, that he probably did really well to run so well that the day. betting editors of the racing boast combining and he has been well backed after the wind off. I've actually um, accidentally backed him in the four place market as well as the machine oh right okay what well, <laughs> on the betfair account back, as he's right next to the ever since Ross Briley right accidentally backed the wrong horse they all started winning I've done that so once we'll, before I can't remember the name of the horse but it happened once right okay well I'll let, you, I'll let Barry sure deal with you about that after <laughs> just remind us again how high did Paisley Park go in running Barry how high was it at, at 48 uh, look, apparently they're saying on terrestrial television he went the biggest he could have done so that looks like a bit of a Horlix somewhere out there I think uh, 48 then uh, that's as high as he went and again I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think Paisley Park could ever trade at 999 to 1 unless he pulled up or fell because you just know that he's that sort of horse well we didn't he's know he was never going to you can yeah, never rule him out for anyone to suggest that yeah all right okay <laughs> believe they're doing it on ITV. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's what I'm being told. All I don't right. think so, because, yeah, okay. Yeah, apparently so, Barry. Uh, anyway, look, this is a very, very classy race. We've got the Captain Or, who's in the race last time, Canelo, who's in the race last time. Everyone keeps expecting Canelo to sneak back into form. Jumping was what cost him out. <laughs> We've got a Paddy Power winner here. <laughs> I here. can't have on this. What, 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 I, I back DBC instead of the machine twice. <laughs> Uh, what? It's not funny, man. What are you on about? I've backed D, D machine. I've backed D machine, but I backed DBC first. So, so how do you? I mean, how do you, you possibly? You've just got it on out, the brain, Barry. have you? Yeah, you have to sort this out, Barry. I, I backed. I backed. I meant to back D machine, but I had DBC on the mind, so I backed DBC, and then I backed DBC in the place. And I just realised I thought well, I better back D machine and D, and D machine in the place as well. So we've got two running. You've backed them both in the winner place market. Yeah, backed them both in the winner place market, but we leave it for luck. <laughs> We're going to have to now, aren't we? Absolutely. And now everyone out there who follows what they're doing is like, hang on a minute, what are you doing? Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, all right. Okay, Hurricane Harvey, the nap of uh, Paul Keeley runs in this. He's course and distance winner. It was just too bad to be true for me last time out. Connor Brace takes that mount. This is a classy race, this, isn't it? Like I said, Ladbrokes Trophy winner at 20 to 1, Cloudy Gren. Wow, we've got Janica in the Hill 16, just touched off in a beacher, of course. G wonderful nuts well for the, uh, for, uh, for the Hamiltons. Top weight, not a big horse, maybe a bit of a problem there. And the fact that Windsor Avenue's got top handicap form and some chaos on the outside has shows you that this is going to be a real treat. Uh, what sort of horse wins this, basically? Sort of like, I mean, Fusil Raffles, a fortuitous winner of the uh, Charlie Hall, wasn't he? But um, this is this well, is class. Yeah. Now, I'm surprised he's not. He was second to Chantry House, of course, in yeah. the um, in the race at Cheltenham Festival last year, the Marsh. So mm. um, he's a bit like top notch, isn't he? The same colours, obviously. So yeah, it's easy. Yeah, that's not, easy. But they yeah. they're just below, aren't they? But they always yeah. turn up, and uh, you know, you can see. Yeah. You could. I could see him taking this that's out. Just, like I see. Is it Tom Siegel's? Put up storm control on the yes. Chris Cook likes him as well. The front runner. Oh so, yeah, the lucky front runner angle, show, isn't it? I put him up as well. Actually, the front runners just win these races, don't they? Well, he will stay there. That's the thing about him, yeah. and uh, he wanders. He's very well named storm control because after the last, he blows like a gale, doesn't he? he wanders yeah, all over, yeah, he does, literally yeah. like he's in a hurricane. Yeah. Uh, and Dermot McConville, a, a, a young lad who seemingly has been impressing, still claiming the ten for now because he's attached to the Kerry Lee Yard. But uh, yeah, Dimashine, we thought he would be. 
an RSA type horse, a Marsh type horse last year, second in the so I didn't see him, as Barry said. Took a little while to get him up and running. First time at an Ladbrokes Trophy, very difficult ask. And I'm just not sure why he unseated last time, but Kevin Brogan, the leading condition at the moment, he's been impressing, G, hasn't he? In yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've only seen him a few times, but yeah, what I've seen of him, he looks, he looks the real deal, yeah. Yeah, all right, okay. So they are telling me, we're just waiting for Nutswell to carry them up as we draw breath here a little bit. Um, what have we got coming up? Of course, we've got the uh, 340 actually coming up, haven't we? We'll be quite quick. Yeah, the Munnap's coming in that. Is it? Yeah. Don't, don't no. keep us in suspense, but yeah. it's not Hillcrest, is it? I know that much. No, that's a boat, though. Hang on, a minute. <laughs> hang, on hang on, hang on, hang on. It's the best. It's a boat. Hillcrest is a boat. Yeah, it's an absolute boat, yeah. <sighs> Tune in at 335 for that. <laughs> All right, okay, great to have you with us this afternoon. Numbers have been really good. Social interactions right up, right up there. We're loving life, aren't we? All you Jumps fans out there, absolutely fantastic. We're listening. What are we now away from the festival? It's what? It's Five, 50 six week, weeks, is five, it? Yeah, not even that, is it? Oh, yeah, because February's a... So it's a four-week month, isn't it's it? It's almost so like the gods that made weeks. February up knew that they had the Cheltenham Festival <laughs> coming, didn't they? Because it is a beautifully yeah. short month. Six weeks. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, Dublin Festival, of course, we will be with you to remind you, Saturday and Sunday next week. Uh, you'll be with us, Batch. I'm back again little on run, the Sunday, you? yeah. Yeah, little, little run, run yeah. coming up. I've Absolutely. had to give up my football, Dave, on the Sunday. <laughs> I, think the, I think the team will start <laughs> climbing the league now. I think the team will be rubbing their hands. We can't, <laughs> climb, you, we can't climb any higher, Dave. We're at the top. <laughs> <laughs> you do take it very seriously, Batch, don't you? Yes, I do, yeah. How's Brighton doing at the moment? But yeah, we're doing well, yeah. Tottenham in the cup. Coming up. Nick coming up, You'd be yeah. hopeful of that, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely, the way they're yeah. playing, yeah. We've got you coming up as well, Watford fan. Oh, oh yeah, that's, a, that's a guarantee three points for us, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, we've got old Woy. Oh, funny <laughs> old Roy. game, isn't it? Funny <laughs> old game. Uh, all right, then. We're trying to digress because so for some reason they're mucking around a little bit. We thought the start of the cleave was dramatic, but... Uh, are str- we going to see a full start here, G? Your, it's your room 101, yeah, I don't, that, I don't isn't like it. it. Yeah, this oh, is going to be a full start, isn't it? Oh, oh no, this stop. This isn't good. Midnight, pre- midnight shadow what, what and the start control. Say? Oh, no, he's see, no, no. See, this, is that, sense, boys. this is where common sense needs to prevail. Is it like, they're all going in, they're all happy, let them go. Mm. Now they've got to try and go back and get a second chance. What's the danger of letting them go? That something that four or five can get left totally behind and do a paisley? <laughs> that is the danger, but then it's... To me, as listen, I wouldn't want that job. If you're coming in, I mean, if it only takes one person to say no, and he and he has to, he has to. If someone's going no, 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 but then it's they all looked happy G- going forward. G Rod, yes. Can you just confirm? Is it a draw, no bet for us, or we do a count <laughs> place horses? His money's down. That's all he wants to know. What are we yeah, doing? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, just I don't is know. it? We have to draw no bet, won't we? I suppose. Mm. It could it could be a two-two tie. We're like a draw. If it's a draw, I think you should both put fifty quid in to the injured jockey fan. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. Thanks yeah, for that, Matty. Thanks for your like, input. Yeah. You're, more than, you're more than welcome, Barry. <laughs> so either way, they lose. <laughs> no, there's always a winner. It's the charity. Oh, okay. Quite right, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually think someone's played golf a lot, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> if it's a draw, then the champion chase should be the decider. You think so? Yeah. What do, well, that's one of the championship races. What do you want about? How can it be a decider? In what respect? It'd have to be a count back on places. Yeah, go go back and we can count back. What? We can, Why the champion chase? Why not the Gold Cup? <laughs> we could make, we could make the fox hunter a lot more interesting, couldn't we? If we did that, basically. Here we go. All right, we're nearly off. Thankfully, we've had a one attempt at it, but he's letting him run in, and that's better, isn't it? There we go. There and Captain go. Orr, who got business in this race, got his ground. Christian Williams. Has got him in a lovely place, we're hearing. He is observing from rear with Canelo. Gran Sonsi out the back as well. They're proper trapping at the moment. So if you're leading Storm Control, you are going quick. But it is Windsor Avenue, to my eyes, who's going to lead over the first. Uh, there's a nice run, isn't there, to the first here at Donny? I asked you what sort of fences they were at Doncaster. Yeah, they're lovely fences. It's just these ones on the bend here, it just, just need to get on the right leg. And sometimes when you're going around the bend, if a horse is favouring these outside leg as his lead leg, then this is it's a bit tricky. So, but yeah, it all depends. You can meet it well, but you'll see some of the that is most of the fence where you see horses have trouble. Yeah. Okay. All right. And they are bypassing that ditch. Then the sun's still an issue there. Uh, and looking at the back, Rocco uh, usually goes the other way around. He's already a little not liking the pace because they are fairly well strung out, G Rod. Yeah, they're quite well strung out. He's very keen on DBC right on the outside of the field. Storm control up there, of course, and Cloudy Glen and all the old front runners. Windsor Avenues there. Is yeah, that yeah. Fusil Raffles as well? Fusil, Fusil Raffles. Raffles. Yeah. He's got that little bit of class that allows I, I, him I to like travel. I like him. You know, he's, he's one of those horses that, as a novice, you know. 
start with Edison. They come up short in grade one company or festival company and people go off them a bit, don't they? But then they reinvent themselves and if they stick around to the veteran stage, everyone is in love with them. Of course, Fusa Raffles, still only a seven-year-old, but he's up there. Yeah, absolutely. It's great team. James Bowen, of course, going for a, a you know, high-profile double at the moment with Daryl Jacob still on the sidelines. All right, uh, the Labrook Trophy winner now coming up to have a look. Cloudy Glenn. Thought he was a big price in this Cloudy Glenn. I'm just not totally sure about, about him on the ground, but big price for a Labrook Trophy winner. Storm Control in fourth at the moment, ahead of stablemate De Machine on the inside. Hill 16, the uh, Beecher runner-up. Very keen on the inside. Some chaos make his way through the field. Hurricane Harvey, a horse that, it, like, needs everything to go his way. <laughs> I've got managed to get one he of does. them in, G-Rod. Yeah. Uh, well all done. right, and uh, DBC on the outside there. Nutswell's got a lovely position, I think. What's that out the back? Is that Janica out the back? In the white hat, uh, it is. Where's Canelo? Back, he's is. also out the back, isn't he, I think? Canelo, where's he at the moment? Yellow cap, Canelo, Yellow yeah. cap, is he? But on the back of course, of because group, Captain yeah. Cap course would have been... See the star cap, no? I think I don't know. I can't oh. see. Where, where is he? Number yeah, yeah that's number eleven. Yellow cap on the inside, Matty Batch. You got you got a job as a spotter what, if you what want. What price is that thing? <laughs> finally, what price retire. is that thing in last, Dave? <laughs> Which one? The one that's Are you trying to goad life? me into the zero comment? Rocco, is it? Uh, is it? It's Rocco. Rocco yeah, yeah. Oh, Rocco, no, I, I'm yeah. not going to say it because you know what happens, <laughs> but you know what you can do with it. Uh, it it's, the digits there available to you if you want to press it. Uh, all right, okay, Barry. We've seen how we're going. We're on the far side. They are not mucking about. Yeah, the machine's your favourite in running a... Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Midnight present. Sorry, Barry. Right as you were saying that, midnight present lost his legs at the back and it didn't look good, I'm afraid, for the Paddy Power winner. Midnight Shadow, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Midnight yeah. Shadow. It looked terrible. Uh, we'll give you. We'll try and give you a report on that, but what a sad... Uh, postscript that would be Ryan Mania didn't have much of a chance there uh, sorry Barry let's come back to you then we've just lost Midnight Shadow yeah it's uh, funny enough the two um, um, that G-Rod back the machine and the BC are joint favourites at 5.1 8 2 Fusil Raffles 9 8 Storm Control you're uh, 11 Cloudy Glen who's up there 23 Grand Sans Say uh, the BC, though, your clear favourite now, 11-4 to 4 in running on the yeah, Bedford Exchange. He's absolutely tanking, isn't he? But Storm Control flew that in second. If you're with the price-wise, you're absolutely loving life at the moment because he will keep going, this chap. That is for sure. Cloudy Glenn, though, goes back into third. Fusil Raffles, beautiful position. Say, Grand Sons, he's pulled himself up into contention. Does he stay? That's the question mark for him. And DBC right on the outside. The stragglers include, at the moment, Janik up. He's not fancying it. Hill 16, how much did that beach take out of him? And Hurricane Hart doing what he usually does, prove hard work for the jockey. G-Rod? How long we got to go? We're on that long bend, are we back here? We're about long to go bend, out the camera bend. site again. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, look, here we go. There we go. There, we might as well go to Emmerdale at this point, aren't we? We could literally be anywhere who's right gonna, now. Who's going to lead when they come We could be on a beach this. in Antigua, we could be on anywhere. <laughs> I mean, what's this about? Come there on, we right, finally, there we found the switch. Did back on, where's, Avenue. Where, where's DBC gone? He's still in front. Well, I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's been a lot more patient with him than he was at Sandown. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, been a lot more patient. Dear Machine's going, well, yeah, we're Barry, Barry and I got this sewn up between us. Are we, Barry? Come on. Uh, I think Storm Control travels well, no? Oh, I've been oh, very nice. keen with Storm Control at the oh, moment. Oh, bad mistake. Oh. Not Seagull uh, again. D, D Machine just on the inside got a little bit unsighted there. He's had to switch. That's good riding, that is. The BC's uh, out to 11.5. Yeah, I think BC. he's in trouble. Yeah, he's gone. That looks stinks of a first run of the season, doesn't it? Yeah. Captain Noor is trying to have a say. Right, we're in the home straight. We've still got 10 miles to go. We're the only front yeah, runners at the front, moment. I, I'm pretty certain that, that Storm Control will outstay him. Now I'm starting to get excited because the pack are just flailing. Could it be stable, mate? Do a machine that sees him out. Come on in, Storm Control. On we go. Four Blow them Storm away, Control. my friend. Off we go. Oh, up and beautiful. over. Isn't it beautiful. lovely to see these horses come back Whoa. year in, year out? And it, again, once again, a staying handicap on a Saturday. Hold on a second. Is he going to... He he's, he's he's no, we know what he does. He idles badly. Devon oh, Conville. Can claim he, he did it last time at, at the Newbury. Flown he's it. done it at Cheltenham. He's absolutely pinged this one. Price Wise has got it right. Chris he's Cook away. got it right. We are in unison as well. Oh, no, one we more go. to go. Windsor Avenue gamely oh. trying to get him back. This is what he does. He blows all over the place. He's fiddled it over. Oh, Dan McConville oh, couldn't possibly get oh, good, could he? he? Oh, Come on, then, Storm oh, Control. He, he always wobbles. Has he got enough in the tank? He must do, mustn't he? He's oh, not even on the screen there. Oh, oh, no. oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. This time it's cost him. Oh, Storm Control. You had it at your mercy. We've seen him do it before up the Cheltenham Hill. He's done it at Town Moor as well. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Windsor Avenue, a huge price. 
for Brian Ellison, Sean Quinlan. Back to back, won it last year. <sighs> Quinlan. Did he? Yeah. Quinlan did, of course, on taking risks. Yes. I thought you meant the horse. That's a double for Sean Quinlan, wow. isn't it? Yeah. 40 to 1. 40 to 1 race, shot. Yeah. Barry, I think we can say we've seen some in running carnage. Storm Control, 104 for 723 quid. Oh, mother of pearl. I haven't said that in a while. I thought we had that, but this is storm control, isn't it? G makes some sense out of that. Why does he do it every time? Yeah, yeah. You, you, I had a feeling he was going to do it, didn't you? You were saying, oh, he goes all over the place. And I didn't think, I thought once he got to him, Windsor Avenue, storm control would come back. But yeah. it didn't happen, did it? Captain or third, we can say that. And somehow, Hill 16, with about 15 horses, 16 horses in front of him at this point, has run on for fourth. It shows that they've both pulled up a bit in front. Once again... A staying handicap batch dominated by front runners. It's freaky now, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. And Doncaster, you, you, you can see that a lot around there as well. And they turned into the straight and they've gone away from the rest of them, haven't they? The front two. Utter, yeah. utter carnage. That, that, that horse did have one piece of form that said he could win the race, which was a banger when he finished second behind Snow Leopardess, who won the Beecher. And I think he's only run one since. I'm, I, I'm laughing because, you, uh, because Hugh Masson, one of our regulars, is saying, Dave is stopping these horses single-handedly. I bat that <laughs> at 16 to 1 yesterday, no. Hugh. I did not want to be stopping that. Perhaps I should hand over the reins to G-Rob on that. Anyway. <laughs> I thought, Wouldn't you all love that? Absolutely. But listen, horses have these traits, don't they? Credit the winner who has just got outpaced and kept going. And Sean Quinlan sensed it. And you're right, back-to-back -back wins in the race for Quinlan. Yes, yeah. He's, since he's gone up north, he's, he's really... Changed his career. He won the mayor's race, of course. Yeah. So that's yeah. Good lad, Quinlan. Good rider. Okay. Whenever you get that off batch, you 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 know it, don't you? Very much so. Uh, I'm looking for some quotes to Shantry House, by the way. As we move on, then uh, that was carnage, and it's going to take me a little bit of time to get over that one. Nicky Henderson, Shantry House. Who wants a quote? He's got the job done. And he's had a right good blow, actually. Says Nicky. Nico jumped off him as he was a bit tired. If you go right back, that's his first race since entry last year. As he's had the two horse race at Sandown and then no race at Kempton. Uh, okay, uh, the cheap paces were a bit of a response. <laughs> well, <know> exactly. <laughs> AP, uh, AP apparently is a great help, he's saying, because um, he regularly comes to see these horses and it was AP's idea, they're saying. Uh, what are they saying? Tough race today, they went a good gallop. Santini set a good gallop. Right, plenty of positives to take. I guess you've got to mm. say that. If you hadn't won today, you'd just be saying, no business running in the Gold Cup. Looks like he's going to go there. Well, he's won them one of the main trials, so he's entitled to run, but he's not going to win it. The he? other news story breaking is that was J.P. McManus. I might bring you in here, Barry. That was J.P. McManus' 4,000th winner. Brilliant. Brilliant. Barry, did you hear that? Yeah, it's 4,000 winner. I heard that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That, I mean, from. AP also had McCoy's 3,000th winner, but he, let's have a word for J.P. McManus, shall we? Uh, what are we going to do when he, you know, finally... It's, gonna, it's a worry, isn't it? I mean, he's, he's literally propped up the industry at times, isn't he? Horses in all the small yards... If he likes a horse, he buys it. It's that simple. Um, he's been responsible for bringing some of the best over from France, Barracuda, first gold, all that lot. There's not, I mean, he is an actual legend, isn't he? Yeah, he is a legend, yeah. And he will go down as probably the the best known owner of all time. It's the Brack, of course. Jump. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. It's hard to think of words that will do him justice, actually. So, JP, congratulations. Four Southerns winner. He did, you know, it's always there, isn't he? And he's. I don't think he's there today. Sort of no, he prob probably not. No, again, I always get, I always get that wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he is. No, I think he's still away. Well, he has to sort of pick his battles with landing on the turf of Britain, I think, doesn't he? But uh, <laughs> I remember I used to go to Ascot as a kid. And do you remember the old Ascot? You used to go down under the grandstand and they have a betting shop down by the lifts to the boxes. And JP would be there with the mafia, as I used to call them, Tim Hyde <laughs> and all those guys, Frank Berry and that. And he would be standing in the middle of a crowd, like, like it was a betting shop, you know, like it was a, a coral or a labrador, so I don't know, or, or whatever these old betting shops, and he was covered in smoke still when you could smoke inside. And you'd just see this little huddle in the middle, and he would be there looking at something at Fairy House at the start, and you know he'd had it on, you know, and he, they would, it's, he, he, he's always visible, you know, and he's, mm. I think everyone's got a JP story if you've ever been anywhere near him, which is quite hard to get near him these days, but um, yeah, long may it continue, eh? Yeah, definitely, yeah, I'd say he's great for racing, everything he contributes, and he paid for a party once, so thank him for that. Yeah, I was about to say, if you've got, I know you'll have a story there somewhere. Remember, this is a live family show. Okay, all right. We've got, what, 
One more to go from Cheltenham, that's for sure. Is that the final race? It is indeed. And uh, okay then, G-Rod, your nap goes in this and let's rev you up a little bit. Who fancies poking the bear? Shall we do that before we go to Barry? Here we have an Albert Bartlett, no, a Ballymore, sorry, novice hurdle, grade two. We have the giant Hillcrest. One of the best Henry Daly novices for a long, long time. This is a dual grade yeah, one yeah, winning trainer. Yeah. Three Felton Cheltenham Festival winners. Saw off I Am Maximus. Well fancied. Highly touted. Nicky Henderson runner last time. 11 to 10 he was. He's gone. Looks like he's going odds on. You just called him a boat. Yeah, he's a big old boat, isn't he? Uh, Hillcrest. I mean, he's going to be a real good staying chaser in time, but he is not a two and a half mile novice hurdle horse for me. Uh, he's, he's absolutely vulnerable to a horse with more speed in this race. I, I watched the race last time at I Am Maximus um, and I, I thought he, he, he made incredibly hard work of it up the hill. What? I thought he, he, he was... I thought he looked very slow up the hill. I thought he, he just... Well, I wasn't that impressed with You're him. You're making a face honest. there, Batch. Like probably the rest of the world out there <laughs> is listening to this. Now, I thought he was really game as you like. I am yeah, Maximus. Yeah. Probably a bit green still, but you saw him off in good style. Just, you've hit the nail on the head, I think. Just a little bit green coming up the hill. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have that description right. Grab All right. We'll see you in a minute, I suppose. Well, we are, and, it's, and we're really glad that he's running here because Henry wasn't sure what they would be saying about the ground for him. He just, you know, he's going to hit it pretty hard, this. So could that be a negative, potentially? Barry Orr, you're taking him on as well, aren't you? Yeah, I'm taking him on. I didn't think that was much of a race. I'm Maximus last day. Obviously, he's a giant of a horse. He might just get everything his own way either this time round. Um, the horse I like in his North Lodge won an entry first time up, which is always a good sign. But the one concern there is Alan King's stable form of his national hunt horses anyway. I think you have to go back to the 27th of December. Edward Stone, I think, was his last uh, win in the national hunt sphere. So uh, that's a bit of a concern. But that's reflected in his price. He's 8-8 eight to eight now. He was around a 4-1 to one chance at one stage. But he's 8-8 eight to eight now. So I'm just going to chance at G-Rod. We're just going to try to finish on a high. We're going to have 50 quid on North Lodge. Um, the race that he won in entry, Richmond Lake was... Uh, the second hasn't run since, but the third Richmond Lake mm. was three lengths second to John Bond in Haydock last Saturday, albeit receiving five pounds. But I thought that was a pretty decent run. So there might be some substance to that form. A lot of unknowns here, obviously, in novice hurdles. And just at the price, I'm willing to chance North Lodge at a, at 8.0. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, is it, he is an interesting runner here. I would imagine he's been pigeonholed for this from some way out, hasn't he? And Alan King's record in this is going to get you up because he had three winners from five runners, uh, the most recent of them being Yamworth, of course, in 2016. He went on to be a hot pot, albeit beaten, in the Ballymore itself. Batch? I'm a North Lodge fan, yeah. Just... Two for North Lodge? Yeah. Okay, now, yeah. nap time. My nap, uh, a different kind for um, Donald McCain who's obviously flying along. He's this unbeaten, this chap, isn't he? He's absolutely flying himself. He's won five from five. He looks very, very good. Uh, he beat a horse called Green Book um, yeah. two starts ago. That's the only horse to get within ten lengths of him in, in his five starts. Very well handicapped he was when and he made Green the move, Book he? went on to win twice subsequently, so I think that form is quite good. Nothing has been able to touch a different kind up north. Now, of course, this is a big, different test, but... Donald McCain, we said earlier, coming back to the big time. Let's yeah. not forget he's, he's won uh, big races at Cheltenham, Supreme Novices Hurdles, all the things like that. He, he knows when he's got a good horse, and he's having a fantastic season there. Dulling off hurdles, is that the one coming down the hill, or is that the one in the straight? Probably the one in the straight. Right, good question. Yeah. So he, the he's the yeah. winning most trainer of the season so far, 107. Paul's on 102, isn't he, I think? Yeah, well, I, I don't understand our horse with five ones by his name, who's got very, very good form, and trained by a better trainer than the favourite, in my opinion, can be so much bigger price. He's having quite a good day as well. As I said earlier on the show, if you were watching, a very impressive novice out of nowhere. Uh, it's called Sullivan's... No, it wasn't. It's called Grace Guy. He's had, he's had a double, actually. In fact, he's had a treble. Yeah. Gaelic Coast is the only horse that's finished out of... The frame for him. So Brian um, Hughes could have ridden some of those, I'd have thought. So wow. why is he down it's, here he riding? Is there a hotter trainer in the country? Oh, right he's now, having an incredible, se an incredible season. Why is McCain. this so big then? And Green Book was well fancy for the Lanzarote, wasn't it? Yeah, he well, was. was yeah, he failed, didn't early he? Yeah. Doors, but it was well Just fancy. Just a very, very well handicapped horse. So the fact he's beaten him. But Balco Coastal, again, he's, he stinks in the betting this horse, doesn't he? Well, I had a text early in the week saying Mick Fitzgerald really thinks this horse is good. Balco Coastal. Well, take out the entry bumper when he was expecting. Uh, horses do flop in that entry mm. bumper, don't they? You know, but really good horses do. They put him in at the start of the week at 7 to 4, 2 to 1 favourite, and he's yeah. now trading at 5 points. The money keeps coming for Hillcrest then, Barry, I can see. Is he hardening all the time? 
Yeah, he's 1.83 now, Dave. So four to five, five point three. Balco Coastal eight four now. North Lodge continues to slide, and it's twelve to one. Bardo's three. I would love it, love, love it. it, if Henry <laughs> Daly got a prop up festival runner here. And of course, but at he, Fisher's Cross in 2013, not, did the album. I, I like Henry Daly, but he's not a man for novice hurdles, is he? I mean, he is a back in the day, G. He's he a was, very he had, good he had, trainer of chasers. He's a Tolworth winner. He's won a Tolworth. He is. He, 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 yeah, and Fain then Rajan. the recession hit, and he had a terrible. Uh, bacterial infection went right through his yard for a couple of seasons. 2011, well, he, he was, had uh, eight winners. Tim Forster. He was Tim Forster's assistant. Yeah. He inherited so, Tim Downson Forster, Hall. It's an amazing place. Tim Forster trained staying chasers. He's Captain a, Tim Foster. Captain Tim Foster, Captain. yeah. Martha's it son. Was correct title. Was that Martha's son? Martha's son, Dublin Flyer. Was yeah, that he, was, he was a great trainer, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he yeah, trained yeah, chasers. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and you yeah. know, as Berejan turned out to be, Berejan was by Raz, as we were saying on mm. feature shows yesterday. We had Henry on; he was he was great. But you could sense the confidence about he, this chap. He is a seven-year-old. He's that's a long-term the thing to say. prospect, is he not? No seven-year-old has won yeah. this in the last ten years. You know, he, he's he's going to be a really exciting chaser next season. Is season he though? Because the age thing is sort of I don't know. He's is, not, not going to win novice hurdles like this, is he? Well, the market would strongly disagree with you. Yeah. And it's about, he has got the form in the book. He's obviously a coin to that. I mean, Denman was an amazing chaser, but he couldn't win at Cheltenham Festival. Well, I don't, uh, right. Um, I, you know, I Denman think was a big beast of all, point, isn't he? Yeah, well, neither This could, is a big beast of all. Neither could Brave Man's Game, there'll be something. There'll be something with more speed than him, surely. Yeah. Well, we'll see. And that, like I say, we're North lucky. Lodge. The riders have obviously Maybe. come back in and said, Henry, it's not too bad because he was going to pull him. Uh, he's a bit unlucky not to be unbeaten, this chap, because he got he, he was too green at Doncaster on his debut. But he's a proper animal, this, and um, one of the best of the British at the moment. So look, it's going to be exciting, isn't it? But he's mm-hmm. got he's got North Lodge totally unexposed, one run, one win against him. Looks a little bit green in the pack still as they're walking around in the preliminaries. Pecana, he that could be interesting for Richard either, Phillips. Does it? Them taking the fence out of the last hurdle, uh, the, the hurdle out the last. That doesn't suit Hill Chris, does it? It means something can get a run at him. Oh, I thought I am. I think Nico de Boinville thought he had him cold last time, and he just picked up again. It, it, is it the last there? By where do you reckon now in Maximus rates in the in uh, in comparison to Belco Coastal? At the start of the season, they had high hopes for him, but he hasn't quite trained on as they hoped. Mm. I don't believe. Um, but he's he's still look, he's, he's a useful animal, no doubt about that. All right. Well, good luck with your nap. He's yeah. drifting all the time. Yeah, yeah that's wouldn't be like you <laughs> to do anything but swim against yeah. the crowd, would it? <laughs> all right. This is the final race here of six we've had so far it's been a great afternoon isn't it great to have you with us we're not disappointing at the moment and on goes Harpers Brook in the last end the giant Hillcrest I can't measure him he's that big said Henry Daly and you can see why he's in second followed by Picana over they go over the first Balco Coastal uh, settling just about in midfield at the moment out the back a different kind at the moment Brian Hughes this is what he's down here for I think we can say that and North Lodge again a little bit green out the back but how good could he be? Uh, Barry, one's gone clear. Have they reacted this time? Uh, no, not really. Your favourite, though, has gone to 1.98. He was 4-5, to five, but he's out to even money now, the favourite, would you believe? He hasn't got an uncontested lead in front. Um, Balco Coastal is 4.69. North Lodge, a different kind, 12, 25, and 21. Harpers uh, had a bet for SP at 28. So he's just come in a couple of ticks. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, of course, a reminder there from Barry that Hillcrest does like to get on with it. So uh, I think we can say, uh, once again, look what we're going. 29 mile an hour. <laughs> the magic 30 mile an hour. It's 32 something. to go. 32, yeah. Oh, OK, oh, we've done it up. Well, we're sprinting. Absolutely fantastic. Do you think they've just got a broken clock there? Do you reckon that's what it is? <laughs> I think they've just come down the hill at that point. Isn't it? He's, he's a lovely horse. I'm just watching Hillcrest. It's such a pleasure. To, they capture the imagination, these massive horses, don't they? Especially when they've got the class about him. He's got an exuberant way of running. Uh, Balco Coastal, pretty free, G, to my eyes. Yeah, he looks fairly yeah. free. Uh, Big drifter, Matty, that was on the exchanges. Uh, I wonder whether he was a bit fractious in the exchange uh, uh, in the Preliminary. preliminaries. Well, he wants to be a bit closer on this fab, don't he? He looks like a nice horse. This horse out in front, though, doesn't he? Harper's Brook. Harper's He's a Brook. lovely chaser, he will, uh, for Ben Pauling, um, who is coming right back to form, Ben. I think we're expecting well, They might all be chasers for, for the future, mightn't they? So they're going to have to swerve around that last, then, yeah, aren't they? We're going to see an Archie yeah, Barge. The last two. Yeah. Okay, so the sun playing no, havoc it, again. It won't be, will it? It'll be the last. 
What have we got? There's another race to come at Cheltenham, of course, isn't there? The 4.15. There's a second last on the hill, isn't it? On the the 4.15 is the bumper, of that course. That was out yeah, as well. Two out, two out as well. The second last is out? Yeah. The second last is out as well. Yeah. 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 Barry, yeah. This is going to be one of those no, dodgy form races, be. isn't it? It was, yeah. It doesn't face that way. Well, look, look, look I'm, I'd rather have back, Batch's word on this I than know, yours, to be honest. I mean, this, might be, this might be controversial. I think they are going to jump the second last here. All right, OK, well. OK. okay. Do you want to even we'll first time round are going to jump at second time? Oh, Jamie. Well, it's oh, it. oh, that was a terrible fall. Oh, oh, oh no. no. No, no, no. Well, down the fab. It's been oh. a dramatic afternoon, isn't it? And Kilcrest, I'm afraid. Richard Patrick. He's all right by the looks did, of it. He's Hillcrest. gone galloping yeah. off in galloping the other direction. Off. Poor Henry Daly, what Let's an afternoon. Let's hope they can catch him. What more fell, didn't he? Bridge North pulled yeah. up. And uh, Northbridge pulled up, and uh, this chap, oh, that is unfortunate, isn't it? What a shame. But that has left G's nap in front. Some people just get all the luck, don't they? What and, happened uh, there? Did Harper's fall and bring Harper's? Yes. Yes. Harper's yes. Brook took us parlour, yeah. and it just interfered. He badly hampered him, and Richard Patrick basically had to go out the saddle. That's what happened. So we're left down to four. Would you believe it? We think with minus two hurdles as well. Hmm. All right. It not Balco satisfactory. Balco Coast, your favourite now at two point three zero, three point five North Lodge, and three seven five, a different kind. Picana then. All oh, jockeys up. Yeah, OK, all right. Good. Thanks, Barry. Yeah, old jockey's up. Thank goodness for that. And Hillcrest, lives, both live to fight another day, the horses, which is the main thing. I'm like poor old Midnight Shadow, unfortunately, Ooh, from the sky. Bad mistake the leader. Uh, then, the outsider's just starting to crack. North Lodge catching the eye, guys, isn't he? He's nice horse, this win, lose or draw, I think. But the nap is in front. Yeah, Does he usually I'm lead? quite hopeful here. I don't think he wants to be in front. He's obviously been left in front by the men. And they coming to the last, Dave, is it? This will be I, the I last. I think this must be the last, then. Three out. Three out. So, uh, who's the best no, no, bumper they'll, horse they'll in here? This. They'll Definitely this Balco one. Coastal was the yeah, best bumper. This, this, jump, no, this, this is free out. This will be the second last. This is jump free out. This is three out, so this will be the last. There's a bit of an argument going on this here as to where the last is. Of course, we keep it here we silent go, look, in see, here. See, I'm about to tell you. Look, they're about to jump. The second last. There's the last. This, this is this is three out, isn't it? No, this will, this will be the second last. It'll be the last. Hang on. Well, what we do know is they're concertinoing up and they're still only cantering pretty much because this is... That was their last hurdle. That was the last hurdle. Okay, here we go then. That was the last. That did look like the second Come on. my money. Okay. Come on, look G's nap is in front. And Balco Coastal, has he been too keen early? North Lodge waiting in the winds under Heskin. This is going to be a race, that's for sure. Picano not done with either. Now he kicks Come right news. How much has he got left? Balco Coastal filling his lungs. North Lodge, a little bit green still, outpaced. Do not Come count on. him out. I think Picana is really doing well to keep in there as well. Balcon's okay, this is, there's no hurdle there's no to there's jump. No Nico de Boinville thinks he's got it. North Lodge thinks he's got it. What a finish we've got on our hands. That's Come for on. sure. Balco Coastal, all of a sudden the nap is looking in trouble. They've gone round, he's the meat in the sandwich. Yeah. I think Barry's going to pull this out and batch as well. This is going to be North Lodge, Come isn't on, it? Flip. It's going to outstay him. I'm almost sure he is. Balco yeah, Coastal gets it. North Lodge looks like he's got it. This will be four wins. Balco Coastal coming back. Back. He's gone! Look, look at him! Barry going for his well. Look at his eye, eye in the last here! They've all let it off. Absolutely amazing. So, two from two, North Lodge. Could he just be a springer at a price in something at the festival? No hurdles jumped. The last certainly wasn't. It was a dramatic race, wasn't it? And not what you want to see, really. If you're on Hillcrest, how's your luck? Absolutely galling. But, history will tell you, Alan King takes his best novice to this race. And he's come up. Could this be another Yamworth? He's had five runners in this race since 2015 for the four winners. Mm. Uh, so great placing there by Kingy. And that was a big price, Barry. You knew. He drifted massively. I looked back at it this morning and all I could see was Edward Stone winning on the 27th, that grade two in, uh, in Kempton. That was the last winner that he had, National Hunt winner. He's had a flat winner since, but... Uh, so stable form was a massive concern, but I think with, with the, all the money for the favourite as well, and obviously the stable form, he's a bet for SP of 9.14, would you believe, North Lodge. But um, yeah, obviously it was a bit of a ding-dong between him and Balco Coastal till he pulled clear in the last 100 yards. Balco Coastal hit a low of 1.42, so uh, 2 to 5 in running for him. And there was no other real in-running news outside of that, except for a different kind who hit a low oh. at 2.22. He didn't hamper him that bad, it did he? It's a fairly soft unseat. Uh, 16 from at. 33 for the Ballymore. Yeah, see, that's a, I think that is a fair price, Barry, because we don't know how good he could be. He's going to learn again. He jumps well. He stays. 
and mm. he's trained by Kingy. The race fall to pieces, hasn't it, with the favourite being brought down? And the last hurdle being omitted. Um, but what and the I last li- two, yeah. What I liked about the fact that he, 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 Balco Costa would be the racier of the two, wouldn't he, chaps? I think we can say that. Yeah. And he yeah. has he, he has out-battled him up the hill, hasn't he? Yeah. Again, because he'd be one of those Hendo horses again, Balco Costa, will get him back on a flat track and he'll... He's going to be a nice horse over fences, I think, isn't he? Yeah, it? I, I, I'd be looking at handicap hurdles with him at the festival, I think. Well, they might Maybe well Coral be. Coral Cup or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I just think Hillcrest might have won that if he'd stood up. I just The rest of them just didn't look that good. Mm. A bit disappointed with your nap. Very disappointed with mine. I can't ask for much more. He had everything go his way, but he just... Just outclassed. He wasn't good enough, was he? Yeah, all right, fair enough. Um, all right, Batch, uh, nice horse there. Fair play, you tipped it up as well? Yeah, yeah, he looks nice, yeah. I don't just feel a bit sorry for... Richard Patrick, he was, he didn't get hampered. He, the horses just jinked out of the way of the jockey going underneath him, and he just, he just lost that point of balance. And yeah, it looks bad, but it's one of those, Dave. It's as soon as you lose that point of balance, there's, there's no coming there's back. No from return. It. Yeah, it's. You're eating turf. Yeah, it's just unlucky. I feel sorry for him. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All right, fair play, Batch. A little bit of technicality there from Batch and Sutter. Well. That is all Stewart's we've got time inquiry. for. Yeah. It has, why is that? Have they come a bit closer? He's well, just come across Stewart's them at the end a little bit. And he, it's not going to, isn't it? Yeah, Intimidation, yeah. that's all it is. It would not, you'd know anything about that, <laughs> would you, of course? Uh, all right, great stuff. Uh, Barry, a dramatic afternoon. It surely was, yeah. Frills and spills of National Hunt Racing. Great to see Paisley Park back. He's livened up that stairs hurdle market. And obviously, uh, Chantry House, I'd be surprised if he's winning the Gold Cup. And I'm looking forward to um, getting plenty of value out of the 100 quid bet that we've had for the injured jockeys fund and Ireland to win more of the four championship races than England and also if it's a draw we count back on the goal cup which I think is eminently fair. Thank you very much g I think I've definitely had your pants down there. There's an image. All of a sudden we're back to the Huntington toilets again. All right, great stuff. Listen, we've had loads of fun. Barry, it's great for you to end on a winner. You'll be back Saturday and Sunday next week. Yeah, looking for. I'll be back one of the days. Obviously, I have to go up to my local track and uh, oh. and support them on their big weekend of race. And so uh, I'll, I'll definitely do one of the days, but I'll be up in Leopard Sound one of them as well. So I'll talk to you from the track. Brilliant. OK, Barry, we'll hold you to that. Wasn't it great Thiasi's day as well to see the sea of fans back in Ireland? If you're watching from Ireland, happy days are coming again. Great to have Barry with us. Batch, great to have you. You'll be back on the see Sunday. You next week, yeah, next Sunday, yeah. Yeah, th- th- thrills and spills, great one action good. all the way. Cheers, Batch. G-Rod, fun as ever. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to... Both days you on are, the Dublin double header. Racing All Festival. Right. So, It'll yeah, be the A-team wait. again next A-team Sunday. Charlie Post again. will be yeah, joining we'll be us. Back. Yeah. All right, great stuff. Thanks to the guys in the gallery, Will and Carl. Thanks to Ben on socials as well. Thanks to you for watching. Loads of sport out there. Enjoy it. Till next week and Dublin.